back in 2020, every podcast that you and I have done has consisted of a shitload of trailers, <laughs> and this week is no different. So, <laughs> welcome back to I the deluge. <gasps> also, Bryce has had like two hours of sleep, so I feel like this is going to be great. <laughs> it's going to be... Uh, uh, listeners, it, listeners, beware! You're in for a scare. I don't know what's going to happen today <laughs> on the Rage Select podcast. That's all right. I haven't gotten very much sleep either, but I've been. I've. That's because I've been staying up playing Cyberpunk 2077. So, welcome back, everybody, to the aforementioned Rage Select podcast. I'm Jeff. Hi, I'm Bryce. Jeff, can you talk to me a little bit about Cyberpunk? Because I, I don't know how I feel about this game still. Uh, I mean, I can tell you. So. I just got to the point. Okay, um, uh, I, I will tell you like a few things, and then you can ask me a couple questions, and then I will tell you no lies. Um, so, <laughs> I this is one of those games like Dragon Age Inquisition where there's like a tutorial and a beginning mission, and then they like let you off into the world, and you can spend as much time as you want in there doing like radiant side stuff, leveling up, getting stuff. But what you should really do is like mainline the the main quest, which takes about four to six hours, depending on on the amount of dialogue options that you're going through and whether you're like taking in the city or whether you're just like, go, 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 go. Um, because there's like, uh, there's an initial prologue and then there's like a cut scene and then there's the first mission, which is that one they showed where you've got to get the girl out of the weird den when she's in the bathtub with the ice and the mm -hmm. dock show. And then it's like from there, then you go do the stuff with Dexter Deshaun, who's the guy with the, the big metal arm who's giving you the job. And a lot of what they've been showing is that. And so like, it was like five hours, six hours before I got the, the title card <laughs> and got <laughs> the world opened up to me. Um, so I've been playing a pretty fair amount of it until then. What specifically can I tell you, Bryce? So I, I, I am someone who's not played it yet. My gut has been telling me to hold off until they actually release the next gen patches. Cause I've got a very pretty PlayStation five here and I'd like to dive into the world of cyberpunk in its full glory, much like all the PC players are. Mm -hmm. um, and so uh, my, I guess my question is like, is, is this game as like glitchy and janky as it, as all the clips that I've seen, or is this, or is this the case of like you, a, a lot of the, a lot of that stuff is just rising to the top of the conversation. Like, is this, is this game like a huge mess or, or, what are what is what are we doing? I, okay, so I would say that it it is very glitchy, and it's probably more glitchy than than we're used to. And mm. I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that a lot of the that the scope of the game is so big that like when you think of something like Ghost of Tsushima, it's like an open world, but there's only like eight to 12 things that you're doing. So you can really tune those things, right? Here, yeah. there's a lot of stuff where, like, because it's so integrated, the story with the world, you're sitting at a table, and then an NPC in the background is having a problem, and you're in the middle of a, a cut scene, right? You're talking to somebody, and in the back, somebody's in a T-pose, and you're like, oh, well, that's not supposed to be there. What it reminds me of a lot in a lot of ways is the way that games like Skyrim and Fallout and like those Bethesda games were when they initially launched. And this was something I was kind of planning on going into a little bit more further down the road, but it's the hot, it's the hotness. Let's talk about it now. Is that I think I would be more worried if CDPR hadn't proven themselves to be very good at like trying to smooth stuff out, addressing stuff post-launch, adding additional stuff like right now there's no way to customize your character after you've gotten out of the character creation system which i'm like i don't even mm -hmm. understand that in this year how that's a thing truly doesn't make sense in a cyberpunk world a transhumanism world where yeah. people have metal arms and yeah yeah so i think that the thing is that what i'm probably going to do is i'm probably going to play all the way through it because I've been really excited for it and i can look i can overlook those bugs like it hasn't been as much like, there was a, a mini boss fight, like a radiant boss fight thing that I did where the character clipped through the world and I couldn't finish it. And so I had to back up and do the fight again. And it took me 15 minutes more than it would have normally. And like, you know, when you stop your car in the middle of the road, the cars 
don't go around your car. Like they just all kind of come to a halt and just sit there deadlocked. So there's some stuff that needs to be smoothed out, but I think I'm going to play it once. And then because it has so much customizability, I will probably go back and play it a second time when the big patches come out. I would say though, if you were at all inclined it would be better to wait than to play it right now because it's almost certainly mm. going to be better in the future than it is today on launch day when it's just full of a billion bucks. Like once they have months to smooth this stuff out, there's going to be a lot of this stuff that's going to look better. You're probably going to have a better time down the line than on day one when we're seeing all this jankiness. That's kind of where I am. The, that Yeah, that was my suspicion. Hearing about even things like how the how the inventory stuff is set up and how i don't know it seems like there are some kind of basic uh navigational and organizational things that you would expect a company like cd project red who has a long history of making open world games like this um to have those quality of life things so um uh, uh thank you for that i'm i'm glad to to kind of get um a, a little bit of uh, uh hands-on reporting on <laughs> cyberpunk yeah yeah i mean some of it like i actually think that the inventory management and the witcher is a f- fucking mess too but one of the things mm. that's a problem i think is that it's got that skyrim thing where you can pick up anything and so in the beginning you're like clearing out these rooms doing multiple passes and i think it's a little bit more onerous than it was the witcher because if i remember correctly on the witcher it was like you would just walk up to stuff and push a button because it was a third person game. But in Cyberpunk, it's like you have to put your crosshair over the item you want to pick up, which involves a lot of just jerking your your viewpoint all over the place, trying to find every piece of trash on the floor and then selling it all for like eight eddies, which is nothing. Um, so, yeah, I, I think that I, like that's my big thing is that if this was a – some companies I get more worried if I see this level of bugs on because I feel like they're just going to throw up their hands and be like – like, I don't understand why Mass Effect Andromeda never really got fixed. Or like, we're going to talk about the Game Awards and people were like, yay, Mass Effect. And I'm like, you guys remember the last Mass Effect, right, that was like – a buggy shit show never got fixed and they just left it on the street or Anthem for fuck's sake that like has been waiting for updates. So I, I have more faith in CDPR than I do in an EA game, you know, or, or even as some smaller third party Square Enix games or stuff like that, because CDPR has shown that they will go back and fix that stuff. Um, better than those other companies. So, yeah. Anyway, um, well, I tell you what, let's get this show on the road, uh, because we got a lot to go over today. Um, because before we got to any, any of the game awards, there was also a huge amount of Marvel, Star Wars, Disney. We got like trailers for WandaVision, Loki, Falcon and Winter Soldier. There's like little featurettes mm-hmm. for, um, uh, I tell you what, why don't we, we don't, we can't go over all this or it's going to be like half of the first segment. So yeah. Um, I was there. There's a Twitter thread that the Disney Plus, I guess, account was was running of like all of the announcements as they were being shown on the thing, mm-hmm. and it was. It, I was. I spent like 45 minutes going through all of these different announcements, and I was struck by how little I cared about any of it. Mm-hmm. It, 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 uh, it. It was someone in one of the discords that I'm in was like, oh, man, this is re- like this is really like, you know, Disney, uh, you know, really exploiting, you know, all their IPs, all their, you know, all their stuff is got now, now it's going to have all remakes and sequels and prequels and spinoffs. And it's like that's already been Disney's M.O. for decades now. But also, I mean, I think they're right. I mean, the, the everything is a franchise now. Everything has to be a franchise now. And and it's. So exhausting soulless. oh okay. it's exhausting it's, it's both it's both jeff you know i i mean i don't watch the mandalorian but i i produce a show where where some of the guys talk about uh the mandalorian and i know that ah- ah- ahsoka just like showed up on the mandalorian and and hey look at this two weeks later she's getting a spinoff show for star wars and it just feels like 
Wow, man, this is <laughs> a very tactical positioning from a super conglomerate. I, I, it's funny because to me, what it comes off as is any more between the video games, especially with the Game Awards stuff that we're going to talk about and like these announcements. It's like, I feel like it used to be that if you made a concerted effort as a media consumer in a reasonable amount of your spare time, you could kind of keep up with everything you wanted to keep up. And like now, you have to start making some decisions about. Am I going to watch this show even if I'm only slightly interested in it? Like when I looked at the mm -hmm. trailers they put out, like I'm really interested in WandaVision. Falcon the Winter Soldier just kind of looked like a generic action scene from a B-tier Marvel movie with some quips in it. And I was like, I don't know if that's going to be good enough for me to want to watch, you know, the Loki thing. Right seem to have some like parallel world stuff but i'm not a 17 year old girl so i'm not in love with no i just <laughs> like i <laughs> there's a group of people who like loki a lot more than i do like i was actually more interested in the the what if animated trailer like i did you watch that one mm. with the uh i i think i missed that one um but but that's like all of the i mean uh, what if kind of explains it very well right it's all these like hypothetical scenarios with marvel stuff yeah it had like it's like had an anthology vibe to it and like one of them was sharon carter was the one in the super soldier program and she becomes captain britain instead of captain america and one of them was like what if yondu abducted like this kid in it looks like australia or something like that like in the outback or maybe africa or something and he's just like he's star lord in here but he's like a little bit more of an adventurer he didn't have the whole backstory and there was you know like the evil doctor strange and i, I don't know i'm just more interested in in that than i am like what what happened to falcon and bucky after the end of end game and i'm like i don't who cares? <laughs> right. Uh, and and I think the those I, I think that highlights kind of something where we're at now in this world where there are a million streaming services, which means there's on the corporate side this unending hunger for content, right? Yeah. I mean, a lot of this stuff from this Disney thing is going to Disney Plus. There's been all of this stuff in the news the past two weeks about HBO Max getting all of the um, the Warner, Warner yeah. films from 2021. And it, there is kind of a zero sum game when it comes to live action stuff. There's only so many of all the best directors making, you know, getting a show and getting a movie and stuff where like animation, even today where digital animation is relatively easier um animation is still expensive it's still expensive to do animation mm -hmm. even though that's where you really can get um you can get not just not even just experimental but you can really do stuff that just humans can't do yeah um what, what was that show on amazon uh last year the um kind of rotoscoped one the time travel uh, with, one with, with uh, Bob Odenkirk. Bob Odenkirk. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Where it was like definitely, it's been it's rotoscope, so they filmed stuff and then animated over it. But there's all all these trippy visuals, all these really cool metaphysical things in that show that you couldn't do or would look kind of hokey yeah. if you did live action. Um, I, I I don't know. I like I'm very excited to see a lot more Pixar stuff. Um, but what does it look like when Pixar just? really ups their output when everybody really ups their output because they have to feed Disney plus and the Disney channel and all of the movie theaters and all of these different channels. Like they, something's got to give. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, like the, the, the logical answer to that would be that at some point next year, we'll all be able to leave our house and suddenly the entire streaming market crashes because people are like, I don't want to sit inside watching Disney Plus all day. I did that for a year, and I'm sick of it. I want to go to the park. I want to play <laughs> volleyball. I want to go sledding. I want to go to the Orange Julius. I want to buy mm -hmm. a purse, you know. And so yeah. suddenly they've sunk several zillions of dollars in. But then I guess the flip side of that is that it's never been – as much money as it does cost, I feel like there's a lot. It, it, you can streamline a lot of the stuff to get away. You can make this stuff cheaper than you used to be able to. Like WandaVision, okay. the uh, visual effects in WandaVision, you wouldn't be able to see that shit outside of like a full movie 
in the past, um, or even like the action sequences in Captain America mm -hmm. or uh, Falcon and Winter Soldier. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I, I so I, I'll say. The things that I'm interested in, I said what I was interested in from Marvel. Does any of the Marvel stuff catch your... I mean, we've got Ms. Marvel. We've got uh, Ironheart with Riri Williams. Um, not not really. I, I I almost get the sense, you know, looking at how much they, like, double, triple down on Star Wars that, like, they're kind of looking at the next few phases of Marvel and saying, well, maybe, maybe everybody should temper, temper their expect expectations in terms of how bombastic... Um, you know, the next Marvel phases will be not that not that any one thing looks bad, but there's not I don't know what the tent pole is in these upcoming Marvel, say the Marvel, the cinematic universe. What's the big what's the next big staple of the Marvel cinematic universe? And we're at a phase where this was the year when we should have had the chance to kind of figure that out in theaters. And then right. obviously that didn't happen. Um, because yeah, we we knew from or very early on that we were moving towards probably an Infinity Gauntlet thing for people who know the comics. In, I mean, as soon as the Cosmic Cube came into the equation, that was like a potential it, signaling cosmic stuff. And then definitely by the end of the Avengers, we knew you know where we were going. And then I feel like it's been a drift since Endgame, where with Captain well Captain Marvel was pre Endgame, but uh, Spider Man the, the Venice Spider Man, and then. I wasn't even really sure how Black Widow was going to connect into anything because it seemed like a much smaller scale thing. But I feel like they need to start building towards another big endgame thing in order to get everybody reinvested because most of the people I know are currently like, eh, I mean, what? Like, wh wh yeah. I'm just going to watch a bunch of disconnected action movies that eventually cross over into some dumb movie I got to go to the theater. So. Yeah, I mean, like, how do you follow up Infinity War, especially given all of the time that's passed since then? Mm -hmm. Like, what is the next Iron Man? What is the next Captain America, given that, you know, the uh, Infinity War made this whole big thing of saying goodbye to these big characters? Who who are the next big people? And this is going to be a formative moment, uh, a sink or swim moment for, for Marvel. So, um, I... I I don't know. I it's, it's all popcorn movies to, to me. <laughs> well, I'll say on the Star Wars side, I really liked the Bad Batch in Clone Wars season five or whatever. So I like that they're doing more with those. I like that little subplot. And then I always thought that the Cassie and Andor stuff from Rogue One kind of got lost in the shuffle between all the six billion characters in that. So like the idea of somebody before the the formal rise of the Republic that was basically like an assassin that was doing this really dirty work on behalf of the Republic, like compromising his morals, but doing it for a good cause is the potential for an interesting character. So they're doing this Star Wars and or and then I like the idea of that um, Patty Jenkins Rogue Squadron uh, hmm. movie. I'm get away from the jedis <laughs> get away from the jedis <laughs> but um I, I i i like uh the idea of a, what a lando series could be for disney plus in mm -hmm. terms of possibly showing off lots of different locations new exotic spaces in in the star wars universe um and then uh, tyke i like taika waititi we, we'll talk about him a little bit later uh, probably here in the podcast but i like him I I think the, the bullet point that says Taika Waititi is going to make a movie. We don't know what it's going to be, but it'll be a Star Wars thing. I could be down for that. I just watched Hunt for the Wilder People. I could fuck with that guy again. It's a, it's about a little kid, and he imagines Darth Vader okay. is there, but Darth Vader's really goofy, and he's played by Taika Waititi. <laughs> Jojo Vader. Jojo, Jojo Vader. Vader. Coming 2023. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> All right. Well, let's get into it. We got Game Awards, and we're going to... Uh, Bryce and I were talking before we started. We're going to skip skip like a stone over a lot of these because i uh, i mean there's just a lot of cool stuff like the like it the was so long it was it was so long there was so fucking much i think Three that hours is too fucking much i think that was from last year because they were so on fast forward last year with like and then the best sound design here are the nominees and the award goes to and best esports streamer here are the nominees and the awards go to that they but i don't know um they had this devolver bit 
in the beginning. I know you're not as as crazy about Devolver as I am, but seeing Nina Struthers come out and they did like an awards and it was literally just to announce this Loop Hero game, which is like a rogue building card deck game. Um, oh, is that what that game is? I couldn't tell whether that was tower defense or what i watched that trailer i felt like i missed half of that trailer watching it on 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 this website because it's it's super short and i don't know what the fuck it is yeah it seems like a Uh like a top-down roguelike mixed with a card game where you end up getting the cards and then the the cards Hmm. i guess like what like slay the spire or something like that but uh, with maybe some um some of it seemed to almost infer like um what do they call that uh, carcassonne like cards making like city a base building. yeah type of thing yeah um we got hmm. so this is all pre-show we got uh, chia which yeah was kind of cool is so cute yeah this is really cute She's doing, you know, um, kind of what was that game that was from last year? Everything, right? You're just kind of jumping into different animals and characters and stuff. Mm-hmm. Oh, I was no, thinking more good. like Mario Odyssey. Uh, but yeah, 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 I like the I like that mechanic. Um, I was really excited, though, to see see a solitude. Uh, the director saying that they're putting out basically like a director's cut version on the switch. Did you did you play see a solitude? Um, I, I, I didn't, but, uh, it coming to switch, getting, getting kind of a, a you know, definitive edition directors, did directors kind of give me another shot to, to try it out. Did, did you like Sea of Solitude? Matt and I played it a little bit. And the thing is that it's very much like the main character is fighting like this internal darkness in them. That is like that voice telling you that you're a piece of shit and that you're not good enough. And like, there's a lot of really interesting kind of mental health stuff going on mixed with this, uh, kind of rowing a boat around this sunken city doing puzzle stuff where I was like, it really spoke to me because I mean, you know, I got, I got imposter syndrome, like a motherfucker over here. So like, (laughs) um, this was one, let's see, we had, uh, oh, uh, Part of Me, right, which was this shadow... Shady Part of Me. Shady Part of Me, right, this shadow on the wall mixed with person in the foreground. And this was like, and it's out now. It's on the Epic Game mm-hmm. Store and all the stuff. Looked like a very good indie game. I mean, you know, I feel like I played that game before. That, fact, oh, that was, okay, that was my thought. It was like, okay, we're, okay, so it's shadow, light-based, jump in platforms, you move, and then your shadow moves. Okay, got, I got it. I think I got it. There was, <laughs> there was a game. There was like a Wii game where you did that, where like the whole game was the shadow on the wall. And then wasn't there was like a PlayStation 4 game called like Contrast, I think, that had like a kind of... Like the main character looked like Moxie from Borderlands, and oh yeah, that was a launch game for the PS4. Was that um, it had like a like a car- like an old timey carnival sort of vibe to it. Yeah, um, gosh, I don't remember the name of it. I could look no, it, it, no it, PlayStation if I have it because I think I still have it in the li- library. No, it, it was definitely called Contrast. I just don't remember whether it had like oh. a light dark um mechanic to it yeah, or whether oh, no, it was you just got a it platformer. Right. Uh, uh yeah you can shift from a 3d world to a 2d shadow landscape okay yeah i mean it's something that we've seen before which i mean in some ways it's also that um uh link between worlds was kind of like that but it looked very cute mm. it looked very cute mm-hmm. uh we also saw some f- some first gameplay for near replicant finally um yeah you played the original near right i did yeah i played the original on the ps3 of uh, gosh i don't know how many years ago now but uh i i this this trailer looks a lot like how that original game looks the thing the question i still have is how does this game play does mm-hmm. it play super buttery action smooth like um what platinum did for near automata or is it trying to be very accurate to the way the original game played which is m- maybe a little slower a little clunkier um i i couldn't get a sense of that from this trailer but god damn and i can play more near <laughs> and i can play more near i'll tell you that <laughs> did uh did the original have the kind of like shmuppy stuff that we see in the trailer yeah. okay all right that was a, a much bigger part in the original near versus near automata all the in fact there's one of uh one of the near automata is kind of set up like near 
uh, rep, uh, sorry, near replicant is kind of set up like near automata where they're just kind of four or five hub worlds and you visit them twice. Mm -hmm. And, uh, one of them is actually, um, a fixed camera top down. And so you are like playing a 2d shoot 'em up, uh, as you're going through this like mine level and you're on a cart. And so it's kind of an auto scroller sort of thing. Uh, it's, hmm. it's a fun mix of that, that they really didn't do as much with in automata. Okay. Yeah. I don't know. I'll give it a shot. I've never played, uh, I never played the original near, um, I listened to a podcast that kind of went over the whole thing in detail and they were pretty mm -hmm. cool about uh, their, their response was that the combat was, very repetitive and very frequent and so it ended up getting very tiring like the story was interesting mm. but that the combat beats between the story got a little got to be a little bit much but that's just secondhand yeah. knowledge i don't really know um yeah because the original near um wasn't as dense what like the the actual map size of near one I feel like was not as dense as the way Automata is. Automata feels like strangely condensed and very small mm -hmm. and it ends up working just fine because, you know, in, in the, in, in a world where you're really engaged with it, you're going back and forth and all around and, and up and down and all these quests and stuff where near replicant or the original near a lot more open spaces. And, and, and that kind of, uh, that, 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 the early kind of makes it feel weightier. The early JRPG big open field with the mm -hmm. few monsters wandering around type of thing. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. Uh, let's see. We also saw Century Age of Ashes, um, mm -hmm. which is a medieval PvP dragon combat game. I wish them the best. I <laughs> this is not for Jeff really at all. Like uh, um, uh -huh. at first, I thought they might have been making a sequel to what was that like? Uh, Lair that PS3 yes, that Lair. horrible PS3 the six game. axis game. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. <sighs> um, yeah. So from there, we got to the actual. That was all the pre-show. So now we're into the actual uh, game. You know, I, it just occurred to me that I wanted to start this segment by talking about who actually won the game awards to get that out of the way. It was last of us two and among us. Basically it was basically last yeah. of us two and among us. I was really pissed that they mix sim and strategy into the same category because they mm -hmm. put mm -hmm. desperados three, which I absolutely loved in the same category as Microsoft flight simulator, which is a <laughs> completely different game that doesn't have anything to do. Simulation and strategy are two different things. Motherfuckers. I, I, I'll keep this very brief, Jeff, because I, I, <laughs> I, I can go for a long time. Okay. M my, my, my frustration with the Game Awards is that it is very successful at what it does, which is find reasons for everybody to watch it. Mm -hmm. I've I watched that thing pretty much every year, and I hate it, and I don't like it, and it sucks. And <laughs> it's, 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 and the, but, and, and, but it's successful at getting me to do that because they get these trailers and I ended up on streams and podcasts and talking about all these things. Yeah. Um, but it doesn't respect. I, I feel like the game rewards don't have any respect for anybody for the games that are involved, for the people <laughs> who are watching it for uh, Jeff Keeley's just person, public image. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like not that it's disrespectful, but it, it is, it is stone faced. It is stoic in its, in its transactional nature we will be showing you trailers end of sentence we will be giving out awards end of sentence <laughs> and and so that that's just that's very frustrating um in a in a nutshell <laughs> i i keep coming back i was trying to say the discord they were asking me they were like what did you think and i was like look i don't want to sound like an asshole but award showers are meaningless and I disagree every year with what wins the game awards because I like different games. Like the fact that they gave best score to Final Fantasy VII and Hades was on that list. And I'm just like, I have been had the music from Hades stuck in my head for five months. I couldn't even be bothered mm -hmm. to finish Final Fantasy VII. But that's a personal thing. That's like the Desperados thing. Like, mm -hmm. and, and you know what? And, and I'll say on the flip side of that, I there's a lot I did not like about Final Fantasy VII Remake. But... The music is fucking a number one on the top of that list. They did a great job of remaking the old stuff, adding new, interesting music. Um, but also very weird that 20 year old games are 
really uh, punching with 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 the new newer title so it's 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 just it's very weird right it's very weird there are there are biases that come with a game like that or, or sorry with an award show like that that i i think are are tough uh you know it wasn't until after the show that someone had posted a screenshot of 13 sentinels which i'm still in the middle of playing and I'm like oh my fucking god it was 13 sentinels not in that award show at all because that the story that is insane it got no one, recognition at all it got one nomination Did, uh ugh. for best narrative and lost oh, to okay. last of us two um so yeah. I mean that's the other thing right is like the game shows want to be the Oscars and they're not and the last of us uh is in the direction of an Oscar worthy film um so I don't yeah. know weird, at weird. The, I mean at the end of the day like there's no the, um there's no doing it right you can't do it right well uh, there's no objective measure of quality right quality is subjective what appeals to people is subjective some people like you know just a, a submarine or like the, those those drive a japanese train game on steam and that's like their favorite game and they mm. play it all the time that's the only thing they play some people just play madden like madden wasn't in here or if it was i don't remember anyway but it, it didn't deserve to be in here this year i can tell you firsthand <laughs> it doesn't deserve to be anywhere near this <laughs> but you know the, it's one of those things that you keep coming back to like I don't care. I didn't like The Last of Us 2 as much as everybody else did, but I'm not offended mm-hmm. by the fact that they all liked The Last of Us 2 better. They got Game of the Year. What does it matter to me? I, it doesn't make me like it more or less or anything. So Yeah. We need ranked choice voting for the Game Awards. <laughs> <laughs> we give out medals. If we move to a, bra- a gold, silver, and bronze medal system, 2021. We have to Jeff worry Keely, about. Me up. We have to worry about our our faithless Game Award electors. <laughs> <laughs> We're suing the the, the, gamers the Gamers Supreme Gamers Court. Su- <laughs> Gamers Supreme Court. I want to be on the Gamers Supreme Court. <laughs> Jeff, you can be. Oh uh, yeah, because it's meaningless. Uh, all right. <laughs> Uh, so the big, I don't, it's hard for me to, uh, to understand that they opened the game awards trailers with the new smash combatant and it's, it's, it's Sephiroth. It's Sephiroth is the, is the new guy in smash. Um, weird, Hmm. weird choice to me. I don't know if they needed another sword guy slash another RPG guy slash another, magic user guy but i guess they just had a really esoteric character between steve and min min those are both really kind of strange characters so i guess bringing in just like a kind of bread and butter character i mean this is also a cinematic trailer we didn't have any actual we, we didn't find anything out about how he plays like um He's got a sword. He's going to play like all the fire emblem guys. He's going to play exactly like Cla- I would not be surprised if he plays very very similar to how just Cla- Cloud plays. Yeah. Right? Um, um, you know this. I mean, if if what Smash is is like the capital T biggest capital B uh, game characters all in one thing, then I think it makes a lot of sense to put Sephiroth in it. I think they gave us just for just for the very funny image of of Sephiroth stabbing Mario in the fucking heart. <laughs> um. That was pretty good. And then playing it off as a goof. Like, that's that's fine. That's fine. <laughs> I don't know. I, I wonder how different he's going to be because in some cases I wonder if um, it, it wouldn't have worked as just like an alternate skin for Cloud. If he's going to play very similar to Cloud. If it couldn't have just been... Uh, you know, a cosmetic change for Cloud instead of a whole separate character. I I don't really care, but I do get how the Smash community, because there's such a limited number of slots with new characters and every new character really affects everything, that they get very invested in, like, who the new character is. Um, but, yeah. When, I, when, it, when, I, when I found, when, when, you know, it was clear that it was Sephiroth in this trailer, it, it made me go... They're definitely gonna put Goku in this, right? Like we're at the point where we're we're talking about these powerful little characters. They're gonna put fucking Goku in this thing, right? They're gonna get Van Dai to give them one of the one of the Gokus from that the Dragon Ball Z uh, fighters Z fighter, and and finally Game Master Anthony's you know prophecy will be complete. Yeah. Um. 
from there we got this trailer that I like they got they got me on this one. They got me on this uh this like ah uh, the world's all messed up. We let the corporations take over, but like what are the corporations actually doing? And it's it was all very generic and could have kind of been any game and then they kind of zoom into this area and then they finally zoom up all the way to the top of this like futuristic building and there's a lady and she's got a gun and then it zooms up and it's joanna dark from perfect dark and this is a new perfect dark game just called perfect dark i guess uh Hmm. rare finally built up enough credits in their on their microsoft punch card to be able to just make whatever they wanted to uh but well and this is um oh god who is it this is uh, what is the company that's making this? This is it's rare, isn't uh, it? Or is it not rare? No, is it the division? No, oh, the initiative. Yes, initiative. Yes, is that is that rare? Is the initiative just a f- uh, B studio for rare? I actually a, don't know. That's a good question. Um, this is the first game from the initiative. Okay, the studio uh, company opened in Santa Monica in 2018. So. I guess it's not rare. <laughs> I guess uh, they just they have the <laughs> IP license, um, but yeah, I mean, you know, I've never I never got into Perfect Dark because I think like, the first one wasn't like an N sixty four game, right? Right, and then they did a three sixty seek an Xbox three sixty sequel that uh, I also didn't play, but heard was fine. Um, yeah. I thought the trailer the trailer was neat, but uh i i was i i'm in the same boat as you is like i kind of wasn't sure what it was for a lot of it i guess the i guess if if the if the thing is that this is perfect dark then you can just take those two words and make a lot of assumptions based on the previous games Mm -hmm. and it's all experience that i don't have i i watching the trailer i thought oh maybe this is like um you're a drone and you're in a big corporate building and you i don't know do drone shit and you 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 blow up guys <laughs> with your drone gun um yeah but it, uh, okay lady with red hair that that works too i guess yeah i mean not knowing anything i'm like it was very pretty <laughs> i'm sure it'll be on game pass i'll download it and play it on my series x it'll be fine um mm. this one was also really weird uh because i honestly thought this trailer was for Left 4 Dead 3 when I was watching it. I, I don't know enough about the Left 4 Dead lore, but like after they w- started with the beginning when they finally got into like, here's a bunch of zombies, and then there were four kind of jokey people mowing down hordes, and I was like, oh shit, did they finally make Left 4 Dead 3? No. It turns out that Turtle Rock? No. Turtle yep. Turtle yes, Rock Turtle uh Rock Studio. Yeah, after the, the failure of uh, uh, Evolve has like you know, as the ex Left for Dead devs, they were just like, "All right, fine, we'll just make Left for Dead. Why don't we?" <laughs> it's called Back for Blood. It's basically Left for Dead. The only real difference yeah. is that they've got these like twenty foot tall, crazy zombies um, that Left for Dead didn't have. But I'm uh, and they showed some gameplay of it. It looks it, it like Left for Dead is a good game, and this looks like Left for Dead. So I, I like it's it's. Yeah. You can't mess it up. You know, the watching them in the context of the Game Awards, Keeley did a, a short interview segment with one of the guys from Turtle Rock. And it was very weird because at, at the at the time, I, I did not piece together that Turtle Rock had been former Left 4 Dead people. Um, and so I thought it was very weird that he was just saying, yeah, you know, we just want to have more zombies and more characters. And that's those are our goals for for game. And I'm like, what? Can you <laughs> What? What? But you just made a Left 4 Dead. Cl- oh, and so I. it looks fine. It looks fine. Left 4 Dead now in New York. Yep. I'm sure Jason will be all over it. He's a big Left 4 Dead oh, yeah. guy. Uh, there's also a few other things that kind of came through, uh, that Robin Hood game that was part of one of the next gen game announcements that focus interactive thing, hood outlaws and legends is going to be out, uh, or is launching May 10th and you get early access on May 7th. If you pre-order it, um, again, this is one of those ones where it's like four players, esoteric multiplayer. And I'm like, no, I don't no, I don't want to the trailer the trailer is very weird because it it it's like do heists with your friends oh that's cool do robin hood heists steal from the rich and get, and take to give to the poor yeah but then also there's like 
PVP and it looked like there was like some sort of they were it looked like they were PVP or or like I don't know capture the flag or some sort of deathmatch mode that just that was really confusing. I really wish this trailer was like heists. Here's the game heists and Robin Hood and we're and we're in really because that's 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 such a, a strong. Um, selling point and it and it got muddled. I I don't know if this is going to be any good, but isn't I like the a, idea of it. Isn't that a thing in like payday where it's like after mm. you do the robbery, if you want to turn on your friends and like try to shoot them, you can take all the money if you manage to kill your buddies. Like I I, I know there's been at least one know. game that had a mechanic like that where we're like you're all collecting stuff, you're doing PVE, and then we get to the end. You can always like just try to screw over your friends and then kind of have a last man standing, take it all or trust them and take a piece type of thing. The, the little bit that I inferred from the trailer was it was like team v team. Yeah. That it would it would be your team versus other raiding teams or other heisting teams. Uh, I, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. Hard to I say. I don't know. Uh, I can say though definitely that this is a lot of the stuff like I keep uh, I keep seeing these trailers come through with this like scavengers game where it's like here's a free to play survival some kind of multiplayer guys got cyber specs on and I'm just like I don't wow that just looks boring and I don't care what it is <laughs> uh, it, was, it was very bold of them to talk about it in the game awards as if it was a thing everybody knew about yeah scavengers is now going into open beta or closed beta what like what, that, is, what the fuck is this game what wasn't that the one where that was in closed beta that they were like but right now there are fifteen thousand slots and the first come first serve you sign up maybe that's another multiplayer uh, thing that know. came later but uh, let's see. Forza is getting the car from Cyberpunk 2077. Um, cool. it, it's already out. So, Hell yeah. uh, so back to the more interesting stuff. We got the trailer for the Callisto Protocol, which is a bunch of X uh, Dead Space. It, this appears to be the new thing, Bryce, where it's like, oh, did EA not let you make the sequel to the game that you wanted? Or it's like, well, just find a found a new company, file all the serial numbers off of it and just make the sequel <laughs> anyway. Like, I like the idea in this trailer that this guy in this prison has a thing on his back that like if you were playing this as a third person game would be a health bar you could see by looking at the back of the character. <laughs> just like in Dead Space. Um, yeah. This was this was a CG trailer, so it was kind of hard for I I have a thing I you know C, CG trailers don't always do too much, but I get that they're announcing a new thing. This seems fine. I I have not played much of the Dead Space games, but I kind of am interested in in this idea of okay, he's like a prisoner or some sort of lab subject, and there's an outbreak, but oh maybe it's all on purpose. Ooh. It actually has a lot of like, um, well, first off, it's got so many Dead Space vibes because they have this scene with this guy getting attacked. And then at the end, they show like a ship coming in. And that's very much like the rescue shuttle that goes to the Ishimura in the first Dead Space. Like there are mm -hmm. rescue crews showing up to a mining ship that has been taken over. Uh, the other thing that I really like about this, though, is that, you know, this guy's in his prison cell and the first thing he sees is this robot that's going nuts and then his cellmate has turned into like this creepy alien monster mash and it's like um the last time i saw crazy robots and then also the graveyard smash was system shock 2 where it was like <laughs> the, the the i forget what they were called but the like it showed cyborgs well there was like the cyborgs but then there were like the weird bio mutants that were like fighting against shodan um mm. so i kind of like that and like all oh, this is very good you you do make a good point though that it is all cg we don't really know anything about it but as a concept thumbs up yeah i'm super into it uh yeah i i hope that's good i don't i don't i'm not good jeff i'm not good with horror i'm gonna <laughs> pass on that <laughs> I, I i think you might like dead space because it's horror mm. but it's got a it's a lot more it's like action horror so um it, it's a lot less like you know when we were playing um um what was that game the red candle studios game we played for the asylum this year uh yeah um 
Devotion. The band game, yeah. Um, that We didn't have very much agency, but like in Dead Space, <laughs> you've got a gun that you could shoot the arms and legs off of the stupid necromorphs, and there's a button that is for nothing more than just curb-stomping monstrosities, and you could really push it as many times as you want in a row, and it's very cathartic. <laughs> oh, okay, you make, a, you make a compelling argument, Jeff. Um, let's see. This is the reason I got these two web pages because one has YouTube links, but the other one actually has the list of things in the order that it came out. Um, mm-hmm. We got a trailer for Warhammer 40k Dark Tide, which is apparently another four v four person PVE a la Dead Space, but this takes place in the Warhammer universe. You're shooting chaos instead of zombies. And uh, wait, isn't this is uh? Uh, 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 Jeff, I don't know anything about Warhammer. I don't know anything about any of this stuff. Mm-hmm. Is isn't this what Vermintide is? Is this a sequel to Vermintide? Uh, Vermintide is similar. I think this is kind of in the same vein. Vermintide takes place in the Warhammer universe, which is the medieval version. Warhammer 40k is the world oh of Warhammer God. in the year forty thousand. So it's all futuristic but then it's also kind of medieval because so much time has passed that things have gotten really weird in the far 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 future which is why you got this big mm. mutant guy that's with them um when i saw this it just reminded me that that uh necromunda underhive wars came out this year and i didn't even play it not even for the video game channel i run which is a <laughs> 40k spinoff by focus interactive tactical gangs fight on these forge worlds 40k is nuts nobody should get near it don't get don't go yeah. close to it you'll get sucked in you'll get like an arm will come out and <laughs> grab you just pull you in um, friends don't let friends figure out what the fuck 40k is just go we'll look at c robert cargill's twitter and every so often you'll see his garage <laughs> and you'll be like no i don't want any part of that i want no He's part of it so many fingers <laughs> um let's see we also saw open roads which is this the one that was from um fulbright the gone home and uh uh the tacoma people uh, or, hmm. yes Am I yeah. thinking? Am I got? Do I have that right? Do I have that right? Fulbright Studios is. I those believe guys? so. Um, did you play Tacoma? Uh, no, I, I, I didn't. I never got around to Tacoma. Tacoma, I think it was a thing where, uh, uh, and yes, this is the Tacoma and Gone Home yeah, people. Yeah. It was a thing where I heard that Tacoma was going to be one thing, and then. Then it got delayed, and it became a kind of different thing. And I, 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 I never ended up picking it up. Did Did you try Tacoma? I tried it. Should a, I? Should I? I've I've heard good stuff about it. It seems like it's a little bit more like you know. I didn't. I don't think I knew what it was. It's basically is gone home on a PlayStation, except you can replay like these holographic recordings of people doing stuff and then those lead you Mm -hmm. to find stuff so you can figure out kind of what happened here i've heard nothing but good stuff about it i just never really went back because if a game like that comes out and then there's also like a ninja game that came out the same week i i end up playing the ninja (laughs) game i like all that ninja shit similarly this trailer is very charming but i i don't i don't know that i will play this i i like the art style with the kind of like hand animated Mm -hmm. characters but then in like a cg world um yeah it it it, uh very much looks like an annapurna published game you know the very pastel kind of looking cg environment and yeah the 2d uh hand-drawn looking character art um it it looks it looks really really pretty i i uh um i wonder i i it's just a teaser so uh consider me teased i say okay uh, let's see. We also got the announcement of Disco Elysium Final Cut, which um, it's strange because I was finally convinced to play Disco Elysium this year. And so I didn't play it last year. I didn't even consider it in the games. It, you know, that was the one that swept the game awards last year. I see why mm-hmm. after playing it is a very good game. Um, it does. It's a little esoteric. It takes a while to get started and it's not immediately clear. Like, 
what I'm, you're doing or why or how or <laughs> or that it's okay to completely fuck up that it's okay to fuck up super hard even on the like you can never do this check again it's okay to fail you will fail into more interesting scenarios my gamer brain immediately is like well you failed i need to reload my quick save put more points into whatever i need and then like succeed because when you play a video game you've got to succeed and it's like no you're playing sad sack harry you need to like part of this game is like you fail for the first third of that game you can't do anything right you can't talk to people you can't do your job you lost your badge (laughs) your gun they won't let you stay in your room you got no money like everything is bad for the first like four hours of that game and that was what I was just like, am I doing this wrong? What am I doing? <laughs> um, yeah. I, I'm excited for this because this is also going to mean the, the, uh, the these will be console ports as well. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, I don't think that they listed the Switch on there, but Disco Elysium on the Switch would be fantastic. I also thought that looking at that trailer, it seemed like they had up. I couldn't. I, it had been a. It, it's probably been longer for me since I've played Disco Elysium than for you, Jeff. But that that trailer almost kind of made it look like they had done some graphical upgrades as well. Um, I think they have. I think it, they've added some. Well, they've definitely added some stuff. One of the big things is that all the lines are voiced now. Um, that they've gone back and re-recorded uh, uh, VO tracks for... Um, for everything so which is great because because uh i like uh, there's if you start off with this it's kind of like a lot of other games where like the beginning parts are very fully voice acted but then it it kind of thins out as you as you go along and just the characters are so distinctive and different that uh more voice acting like is is a good thing i'm 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 interested in this. Well, they definitely in this trailer seem like they've adjusted the camera to both zoom in and zoom out. It seems like they've done some more, a little bit of work on the lighting engine. It basically seems like what you would think was that it was like, we gave them a shitload of money last year for Disco Elysium. And then they just spent 2020, like smoothing it out, recording dialogue, Mm -hmm. putting in shadows, adding some stuff. Like there's some stuff in here. I did pretty much everything. And like, there's this, this scene with like all these cards falling down or dominoes or whatever. I do not remember that being in the game. And I was, I got to a point where I was pretty solid about like trying to find everything that I could. Um, So yeah. Uh, The only thing about this is I don't know, Bryce, I don't know if I can stand a fully voiced Kuno. I don't know <laughs> if I could hear Kuno. The fuck you want? Just like <laughs> all the voice dialogue lines he has in that game. <laughs> um, it's gonna be great. Uh, it's gonna be great. Yeah, I might actually end up. Uh, I might actually end up playing a doing like a a full playthrough of this at some point for Rage Like because I think it is interesting and I, I think it would be a lot better. One of the things when we tried to play this initially that turned us off was the fact that it was so text heavy with no spoken dialogue that it meant that if we were going to do a full playthrough we were going to have to read every line of dialogue out loud which is exhausting Um, which was exactly my experience with it trying to stream it is the voice acting is great and there's a lot of stage direction and Mm -hmm. a lot of you know observations on the scenes yep uh so yeah, that that's great. It's coming in twenty twenty one. I thought I thought from the end of the trailer it said like PC, PS four, PS five, basically. Um, so Sony might have mm-hmm. snagged up some exclusivity rights. I could be wrong about that. Uh, we saw a trailer about Dragon Age four. Uh, Bryce, do you give a shit about Dragon Age? I have. I no. I've 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 not played any Dragon Age. This looked like a very pretty cutscene. Um, but this couldn't be in this this doesn't tell me anything in terms of it, it seems like the big point of this cutscene is to make a stark i don't know contrast between previous dragon age games and whatever the fuck this thing is um but it looks neat uh, you know that there's a little floating island and the guy's got a magic arrow and dragons there's probably dragons in it i'm it's gonna be my guess jeff that's my expert analysis there will probably be dragons in the game 
I don't like Dragon <laughs> Age. I, I, I it, <laughs> it took me a while to come to this conclusion. I tried playing the first one multiple times, but I don't understand the systems. So I keep getting about two hours into the game and then hitting fights that I just can't win and can't do any. Like they're unskippable. I lose every time I do them. I just don't understand what I'm doing wrong. Uh, Dragon Age Two was rushed out in a hurry, and it really shows because it all takes place in the Kirkwall or whatever. And then I think Dragon Age Inquisition. I really don't understand the love that game gets because it was kind of a mess. Um, it was like so many collect X number of things, so many side quests that were just kind of for experience points for a combat system that you didn't need the experience points for. I'm not the biggest fan of medieval in the first place. Um, and for whatever reason, Dragon Age is like, it just doesn't do a whole lot for me. I'm super, super happy I really hope this one comes out. I would like to say to everybody who likes Dragon Age, I want y'all to remember that the last game was Anthem and the game before that was Mass Effect Andromeda. Like and and BioWare like has had a lot of staffing departures. Yeah. Whether that's going to be high high level staffing departures, whether that's going to be clearing house and and maybe dusting off some cobwebs or maybe people jumping ship we're not sure um but it's very kind of unfortunate timing that that these dropped uh when they did the week after casey hudson and the head writer for dragon age both left (laughs) by where yeah Yeah. um so i mean you know i I hope it's good like I, i never want games to be bad i would like games to be good i just have not enjoyed any of the dragon age games that i've played really all that much um I do enjoy the Endless games, though. And so the announcement of Endless Dungeon. Did you, were you aware of this? I was not aware that Endless was like um, a proper series of games, a whole universe of games. Yes, uh, because I really liked, I believe it was called Dungeon of the Endless, which was like the first one. It wasn't the first game, but it was the first one in the timeline where you like crash land on this planet, you have to go through because it was like okay, you had Dungeon of the Endless, and then there was like the one that was a civilization style game, and then from there, I think the first one was called Endless Space or something, and that was like a four X game. I really like the fact that this franchise, every game is like a different genre because this looks like a third person almost like a diablo style roguelike um Mm -hmm. and it's got a little bit more like the first game was a pixel art game and then the civilization one was very realistic the outer space one was zoomed out because it was 4x but this is a kind of a very isometric top down looks real buttery smooth kind of action game and i love the little cutscene at the beginning with the lady singing so um yeah, I'm super glad that this franchise keeps getting made because I like it. I I think that more companies should look at, like, does it make sense if we make a prequel to this first-person shooter for it to also be a first-person shooter? Or does the prequel story lend itself more to a strategy game? Let's make a strategy game that's a prequel to the first-person shooter. No, we won't get the same audience. But, like, it's why I think that Darksiders is so interesting because it's like... You know, Darksiders 1 is Zelda, Darksiders 2 is God of War, Darksiders 3 is basically Dark Souls, and then Darksiders Genesis is kind of, I don't know, almost like a throwback, almost a Diablo-ish kind of top-down action game. Um, so I I really I really enjoy this developer. It's been, I don't play the 4X ones because I can't play 4X games, Bryce. If I get into a 4X <laughs> game, I'll never leave my house again, so... Yeah. No more videos, just playing 4X games all day is Jeff. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Um, right. Uh, let's see. We, we're almost about ready to take a break. Let's do a few more things we can knock sure. out real fast. Uh, Crimson Desert is a open world action. Was it online as well? Was yeah. it an MMO? So, so this is from the studio that did Black Desert Online, which was an online okay. MMO. But this is a open world action adventure game with some multiplayer stuff. They've said that there's PVP in it, but I don't think it's a big MMO game. I thought that this trailer was like the crown jewel of the night. 
I really like, it it would. I, I think so. It was it was it was very long. It's like five minutes, and <laughs> so you, long. you get you get into it, you're like, why are you? So, but but I I think that it, a they I think very authentically show a lot of in game and in engine footage, like not really a ton of CG stuff. Mm-hmm. I think that you know Black Desert um, for an MMO has like kind of this insane, really pretty engine. And divorcing that from an MMO and making it a more uh, f- uh, action action adventure sort of thing rather than an, an uh, I don't know what you would expect from an MMO um, style game. Like I, I think that's really uh, a, a real boon for this game. I mean, I, I think it looks gorgeous. It looks like there's a ton of stuff that you do. Like later on in the trailer, you actually see uh, the character like flying on a dragon, and I thought that was way more. Uh, interesting than the game that we talked about earlier that was just about flying a dragon Mm -hmm. like i don't know enough about this game to say it's gonna be good but i think this trailer is like is fantastic i'm i'm really excited about this in a way because like i don't really like the high fantasy stuff too too much um but this is this this was just exciting i don't know there's a lot going on it's really pretty and um uh, and the hair that I will say the hair in the engine is very funny. It just, you have the very dramatic scenes and the hair, which is very floaty, just kind of always like jiggles. You have hair jiggle fig- physics. So uh, <laughs> the thing that tripped me up about this is one, the definitely the length. It's too long. The trailer is too long. Um, <laughs> and then I think in the, and I think there was a thing that happened because of that. And that's in the second half of the trailer or in the middle of the trailer, there's a lot of action, and part of the action are uh, from this combat system appears to be very kind of like jerky, fast motions combined with camera shake and like some motion blur when things are moved that made it like it started kind of giving me a headache looking at it because oh. it was so shaking and like super sharp and all these particles and like this blood and it, there was something about the way the characters were moving where it's like every time there's an impact there's like a again like a camera shake or like a little bit of a zoom or, or like a, a motion blur that started mm-hmm. to just great and I it's very possible that that's because they just showed too many action scenes in a row and that if you were doing this and you you know fought one guy and then you're going to have a break and you're going to run to the next guy and you're going to fight that guy like you're not going to fight 80 guys and then smash cut between guy 1 guy 2 guy 3 um yeah it's interesting though to hear that sh- that that was uh that this was one of the highlights for you because I would not have expected that um I I was very surprised by it too because uh, Black Desert Online just by virtue of being you know this online game, uh, it just was never really gonna be um, anything that interests me. And so I I don't know there was something just especially this part in the second half of the trailer here where it, it, there's also like a lot of adventuring and exploring. Like I I think it's fascinating. I don't know what this game is, but it is. It feels fresh, I guess. If we're talking about action RPGs, um, the look of this feels fresh and sharp in a way that sometimes action RPGs can feel maybe a little mm, blunted. Okay. I guess. I get that. I get that. Um, well, let's see. Uh, let's. I tell you what. Let's round it out with... Um, uh the swedish chef is in overcooked uh that that was just a thing they did a little skit actually did you watch the skit with the swedish chef no i didn't no i i I was cooking at the time i was i was i was i was in the middle of a huge work project while this was going on and so i was trying to get a lot of things done while the game awards were gone so i saw that the muppets were back again Mm -hmm. and i said i can just go make some spaghetti right now i whatever this is is gonna uh, it will be fine (laughs) Well, what was weird was that they had this whole segment where the Swedish chef calls Jeff Keighley on Zoom and he's made his own uh, game award out of foil. But the thing was, they had the Swedish chef puppet and somebody was doing it. And then the Swedish chef is one of those puppets where then they have like the hands, right, that come out of the the puppets. And then like one person does the other hand and then one person does the, you know. Um, But they didn't put the 
the flesh colored felt gloves on so they were just human hands the swedish chef just had like human <laughs> flesh hands and i was like oh no oh no T- turn it off get it away get it away <laughs> That's weird. um but let's finish up but- with um uh this uh season game which yeah. seemed very interesting um it the concept here seemed to be that like uh, what the, the the line in the trailer was our grandparents lived for a thousand years and our parents lived for a century but we only get one season uh so mm-hmm. it's like as it goes what they get to live until they're 10 i guess and then they die is that a thousand a hundred 10 i guess the character doesn't look 10 but they could be aging really fast um I uh I I took that to mean like hey we know the end of the world is coming like a comet or global warming or something and so everybody you are released from your societal responsibilities please enjoy your remaining time and so we we see this character who's you know recording audio of a of a dragonfly and taking photos of wildlife uh I this is this is a gorgeous a, a really gorgeous trailer and I would like to know more about what this game is, whether it's a, a very linear narrative game and you're going and you're exploring this world in the set story or it's like Pokemon Snap and you're going around and like doing stuff like we don't know. But I, I, I think just visually, it's very striking the use of 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 of, of nature and color and, and um, you know, camera framing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it would be. It would be nice to see more of what you're actually doing in the game because a lot of it is that the trailer is like dialogue, walking, riding a bike. There's not like, I don't know. I, it, I, I sometimes get a little bit out of sorts when games are just like, yeah, the whole point is just to experience the world. And I'm like, right, but what do you do? You shoot something? Do I push a block to one side is there like a dialogue puzzle that i have to do like no none of that just experience the world and i'm like no i don't want to (laughs) (laughs) Uh, well and i think you know that depends on like what is what is the context of that exploration right are you you know going to go to this hub and see all of the check all the boxes here and then go here go here or is this more open? You know, it looks like exploration and, and traversal um, seems to be a significant part of it. Um, I, I'm, I, like, I, I, I think it's, it's striking, you know, I, I think you just can't get over how, how, um, how, I don't know, bold and confident it is. Yeah. It's very, it is very, very striking to look at. Um, and with that, we're going to go ahead and take a break uh, because we've been doing this, for an hour, I I I think our our, our rock might have uh, like gone under the water a few times. We had to keep picking it up. We had to get like a little <laughs> those little fish nets and get it out of the water and then try it again. Um, I think though, if I if I remember correctly, the second half of the game awards. There's some interesting stuff in here, but towards the end, it really starts to dip a little bit. So um, in any case, we will take a break and then we'll come back and find out whether that is true or not in just a minute. So stick around. And as as always, we're not done yet with the trailers. <laughs> There's so many trailers. Um, but I feel like Jeff, we have this Call of Duty thing. Does this excite you? No. It's Call of Duty seasons? No. I don't know. Warzone? Did you like Cold War? No. Well, I, I didn't actually. I didn't. <laughs> I, the thing is that it was on my list, but I spent 60 hours playing Yakuza Like a Dragon, and then it was like, well, if I finish Yakuza Like a Dragon, then I can knock out Black Ops, and then I can check out uh, Cyberpunk, but then Immortals Phoenix Rising was so friggin' good that I just ended up mainlining that for like the last week. Um, So I haven't even played the single-player campaign. I am not good enough to play Call of Duty multiplayer. 
I just am not mm. good enough for that. So um, same ditto. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I feel like there was a lot of story in this trailer, but having not played Cold War, like the allusion to this villain, I was like, I don't know who this is or why I care. <laughs> so. Uh, <laughs> Uh, speaking of who is this and why do I care? Why is Vin Diesel in Arc Two? And what is this trailer? I don't understand. <laughs> Does did Arc? I know Arc is super popular, but did Arc have a story? Like, 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 because Arc Two, this trailer for Arc Two, which like you did, you know, it wasn't until like the very end where you're like, oh, this is Arc. Um, this looks like a single player game where my understanding of Ark was like, it's kind of like the Fortnite thing of like, it's a persistent server and you can, you can build stuff or more like a Minecraft thing with dinosaurs. So I, is I, I just don't know. I just don't have any idea. <laughs> I, I, I like, I have no idea about Ark. I played, I think the VR game. Um, this was a really yeah, this trailer felt like it contained a lot of information or that it uh, assumed that I knew information that I had no idea about. And then at the end, they go into the Horizon Zero Dawn cave and it's like Vin Diesel is like his genetic profile of somebody from the past, but he knows how to like turn off the cave computer and like <laughs> what i don't understand I, don't <laughs> I just don't understand and then like he has one line like a, most of the re- well he has two lines he has one at the beginning and one at the end but then the rest of it's just vin diesel grunting and i'm like does this matter is this important that vin diesel is in this and also vin diesel's head is the ugliest part of this trailer and you're looking at it the entire time it's why did you put this man in this game i don't i i good on good on arc people because i i think this is this this i think i wonder if this will be a trend much like the black desert online to crimson um desert transition of like hey we had a live services game where we had an, a multiplayer uh, persistent thing but uh, we're gonna do story-based stuff or we're going to reduce the scope of those and focus more on narrative stuff um like m- maybe that's that's a new trend we'll be seeing in the next the next 12 months is a uh, we'll shift away from live services yeah maybe i i don't know i just keep looking at this and saying like it reminds me of the godfall trailers in that like Usually when you create a trailer for a game, like, okay, for example, the the other thing they announced was this animated, uh, arc animated show. And like, that made sense. It was like, here's a girl and her dinosaur. And like, this dude is trying to kill her. And then they fall down a waterfall and like, oh, okay, I get it. I side with the girl and the dinosaur and this guy's the bad guy. And, and I see her face up close. But for this, uh, this, this Vin Diesel trailer, I'm just like, are the who are the bad guys? Are uh, what well, the dinosaurs? The dinosaurs, are the bad guys. But the, but half the trailer is them fighting these weird Morlock looking motherfuckers with like their oh. their weird bones, and there's like a the, the kid and and I I kind of got all that. Like we're trying to survive in a brutal world full of dinosaurs with our tribe, but then uh, they go into the cyber cave, and I lose the whole plot about what mm-hmm. i i don't understand i don't know it just seems very strange to I, me uh, yeah I, I think it it definitely doesn't help that neither of us are are super versed in in what arc is and and that that universe but it i i i bet i don't know this this is it's got a lot of potential i guess is what i would say like it, it other than vin diesel's face it looks really this is a really good trailer and they say it's an engine so um, who knows what that means, but yeah. you know, Hey, dinosaurs, dinosaurs are back, baby. In a, in a big new way. I am. I, I think I will be more interested in watching the, watch the animated show, give the animated show two episodes and be like, am I being drawn into this world? Oh, this is a good show. I'll watch all the show. And then like, Oh, I really like that show. Why don't I go try the game instead of like the other way around? Because yeah, as it is, 
I, I think a lot of the problem with Arc was that it was like an early access thing. Like we had a story way later we we're probably not going to get to about Rust and how I like I know nothing about Rust outside of the fact that everybody <laughs> runs around naked. And that's all I know about Rust. And Arc was kind of the same way with like it. I always thought that Ark was like, um, what is the game? Uh, Daisy, Daisy. Oh, uh-huh. with dinosaurs. That it was like a big open map. An uh, yeah. yeah, and that there was some building and stuff. But I, I really didn't know. I played one of the VR games, I think, briefly. But yeah, I don't, I don't get it. <laughs> I don't get it. Uh, yeah, but but uh, you know, I mean, we've seen the. I don't, I, I don't know. Making making a shift could could be a, a strong thing. I I I, I don't know uh, dinosaurs. I don't know either. Um, let's see. From there, we got a Fall Guys season three trailer. It's winter. It's Fall Guys. Um, yeah. We got an Outriders trailer, which like I really want to play, but you know, um, I, I've seen enough of it to know that I really want to play it. Um, you, okay, that's that's very interesting for me to hear because. Um, I feel like I see promotion for Outriders mm-hmm. a lot, and I don't. I have never heard of Outriders. It's <laughs> I, I, it, it, <laughs> when was this game ever announced? What? I, I, what? Mm, what's yes. Outriders? Do? Yes. I, I I've okay. been keeping up with it because it's people can fly who made Bullet Storm, and I love Bullet Storm. Um, I see. So it's like a third-person cover-based action game with powers. It's kind of like... So the whole thing is that it's like people were sent to this world in cryosleep, and then when they get there, they found out that like the people that landed there, none of the technology worked, and so it's this very brutal world full of kind of semi-medieval, but it does have guns, and it's got some stuff. It's got some interesting kind of power builds. What it is is it's third-person destiny made by the people that made bullet storm with a heavier narrative component and what i think looks like an interesting set of powers that maybe i live in a world bryce of like maybe (laughs) this is the destiny that works for me because so far i haven't (laughs) found the destiny that works for me it's definitely not destiny um so Mm -mm. but i don't know there's way better places to see it than the game awards um what else i have there's an evil dead game uh like a full and it looks it looks like all the other horror games that have come out didn't it it yeah. looks like friday the 13th then dead by daylight like I, I, it doesn't help uh, if this is like a story based game it doesn't help that they the entire trailer is set in one set piece which is like a cabin in a haunted wood well it, it what it seems like is like like all the other four person PVE games, right. That we've seen in this so far, because there's like Bruce Campbell, there's like a lady, there's like some guy. And then there's a knight, which is obviously a, a, a a nod to the army of darkness connection with the portal that comes to the evil dead world. Um, I don't know. Again, (laughs) this is very strange. Like it, the the video game industry loves this four player PVE like co op concept like, and I think it's because they can monetize it and it's uh, you know they can sell you skins and DLC like for this I can I can obviously see like here's the regular Ash skin but then also here's the Army of Darkness Ash skin here's the skin of the Lady Ash from the Evil Dead remake you know here's Linda mm-hmm. here's you know the, the the other people so. I don't know. Saber Interactive that's making this, they're they're okay. Um or, or I don't maybe they're just publishing. But um I I don't know. I this is another one of those things where boy they want this concept to work. They really want this four player PvE thing to work. Um but yeah. I don't know. I'll give it a shot. I I mean what who am I kidding? I, I play every single game that comes out. You play everything. <laughs> so we'll see. Um Ghosts and Goblins is getting remastered into a Ghost and Goblins re- resurrection. Um this I, I I don't want this entire second half of this podcast to just be like boo, boo raspberry, <laughs> but like I played Ghosts and Goblins not that long ago for it was like yeah like one of the emulators or on one of the things i don't like ghosts and goblins like it's very hard (laughs) 
it's not very rewarding. Like you have to play the shit out of it to to get good at it. And I don't know. I I did think it was interesting at the end uh, that they mentioned that like, hey, we're going. Uh, is, is it Capcom that's that's doing this? Hey, we're going to be doing a big uh, virtual arcade dlc store thing which i think is 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 um you know may, maybe welcome on say the switch uh or or any of the consoles where where a lot of that content is not been revived for current and new generations it reminded me wasn't there like it was like a um an xbox 360 early on had like a an arcade where you got the front end and then you could buy the games individually to slot into the front end yeah, I I don't know the name of it, um, but you, you're exactly right that that was, but that was like Xbox. That was like a Microsoft thing. Where I yeah. think this is a a, a Capcom. I'm, I'm, I'm assuming that I'm right in remembering this is Capcom, a Capcom yeah. specific thing. Um, so I don't know. Yeah, uh, we got a new trailer for Returnal, which is the House Mark uh, kind of Dark Souls meets Schmuppy. Uh, house mark uh, thing that we saw originally at the ps5 reveal um mm-hmm. i i didn't expect there to be this much like bullet hell uh i i should have but because it's like, house mark <laughs> yeah i feel like the original trailer was a little bit more just like gritty character environment and stuff but like ooh, the particles <laughs> the, the the particles in this trailer are <laughs> They're fast. It, it, it reminded me a lot of Resogun, I'll tell you that. Uh, but but it was good to see some gameplay of this and really uh, kind of get a firmer like, okay, yeah, this is a third person shooter. Uh, you're going to be shooting bullets and avoiding bullets a lot. And there's a time loop. Like, um, I don't know. I, I feel like I have low expectations for how smart games because they're, they're good, but they're not... Um, in my in the, the the feud that I've I've played over the years have been uh, maybe not deep. They're good, but maybe not deep. Yeah, I feel like they're they're good, but they're not sticky. I never I never keep playing them. I play them a little bit. And I'm like, oh, that's that's cool, and then I stop playing them and I never go back. So, yeah. Um, yeah. Let's see. We also got uh, a a. a <laughs> What's the, what's the guy's name? Joseph Fer- Ferris or whatever, the guy that made A Way Out and um, uh, uh, Brothers. Brothers. Yeah, we got a trailer for It Takes Two, which appears to be A Way Out, but with whimsical uh, puppets in love uh, yeah. and a big talking book and a lot of comedy, but with a kind of a, a, a co-op um co-op puzzle solving third person kind of action adventure game which seems very charming and that dude is always so excited at everything he's making that i don't know it's somewhat infectious um, yeah this is cute i this is very very story focused and kind of has a you know a family friendly kind of illumination studios style you know ah uh, two people have been turned into puppets and save them turn them back into humans um it, it looks cute you know uh couch co-op maybe a weird time or I, I i i am assuming there's a couch co-op element to this but i guess they've done online multiplayer as well um sure okay, yeah why not uh yeah yeah, yeah. a family friendly version of that thing yeah i li- i really liked um a way out i know a lot of people didn't but i i played it well with one of the co-hosts here at Rage Select, we played it all on Patreon, kind of one week at a time, and I really enjoyed it. Um, so, And I really like Brothers. Someday, I'm going to get somebody to play Brothers with me because <laughs> that game's friggin' amazing, uh, and I love it. Uh, we got a Super Meat Boy Forever. Finally got a release date, December 23rd, um, which is... There's so many things this year coming out. Normally, December, it's like after the first week, it's a dead zone, but this year, there's all kinds of shit. Like uh, mm-hmm. that override Mech City 2 is coming out on the 22nd. We got this on the 23rd. Um, there's all kinds of stuff. Hell, I haven't even touched I mean, it, um, it, mm-hmm. Empire of Sin, uh, mm. which I heard was not it, that it, good. I mean, some amount of this has to be COVID getting stuff delayed, but people still, but, you know, publishers still wanting games out before the holidays. Yeah. Um, 
but yeah and, and then also super meat boy forever has been in the cards for ever <laughs> so <laughs> it's one of those ones where it doesn't matter when it comes out the people that want to play that game are going to play it regardless yeah, they're ready for you when, whenever you're ready just just you let them know yeah uh I don't know about you, but I am a real sucker for Outer World Soulstorm is like one of the things that I'm really, really, really waiting for. Um, so it was nice to see this got a release date of spring 2021 and we got a full trailer for it. Um, yeah, I do you know the story of Outer World Soulstorm. Um, I know the general theme of the odd world games which um is is still pretty prescient in in terms of today's industrialized um uh a capitalist society yeah well the the big thing was that apparently when odd world one took off um whoever it was that published that like they forced lauren lanning to make like odd world two in like nine months or something like that. Something insane. Like they turned around a sequel super fast. This is what was supposed to be Odd World 2, but they didn't give them any time to do it. And so finally, Lord Landing was able to get the rights back and to make the game they wanted to make all those years ago. Um, nice. Which I'm super happy about. Uh, let's see. We also got Elder Scrolls Online is getting Oblivion Gates. Hooray. Cool. I don't, I, I thought they already had them, but whatever. Um, Monster Hunter Rise got a new trailer and a time limited demo coming out in January of 2021. Are you do you do you hunt the monsters? Are you the monster hunter? No, I'm I'm not. Is this is this the good new monster hunter or is this the old not as good monster hunter? So the the okay, Monster Hunter World was basically made for all audiences and this one is focused a little bit more on Japan, um which is why everything kind of has like an Asian flair to it. So there's this mm. game. This is technically, this would be like, I think monster hunter world. Like, might, is this world two? No, this is like six or like world was like the, the four everybody spin off that, that ground down some of the more uh, spiky monster hunter edges for a world audience. And this is more like the throwback to the super technical old, monster hunter uh oh. and then there's another one that they're making that is the um it's like a story driven uh, kind of cutesier rpg w- one that is separate from this a lot of monster hunter a lot of monster hunter right now okay um hmm. i've never really been into the monster hunter it's so technical and difficult <laughs> Yeah, very, very persnickety in the little bit of like Monster Hunter and Monster Hunter like games in terms of like, you know, going out on expedition. I just I never really figured out that game flow of doing expeditions and stuff like that. So it it just it just went over over my head. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Let's see. We also had uh, a new map for Among Us, the airship map that's coming in early 2021. Uh, which was nice. Very strange. Uh, so much Fortnite. <laughs> so much Fortnite in this. Uh, it makes me wish that I didn't, well, not hate, but like that I cared about Fortnite. I just don't care about Fortnite. But uh, Master Chief is going to be in Fortnite. Oops. Uh, and um, also, there was a whole Red versus Blue uh, skit where. What Sarge and Griff and Red versus Blue were talking to Ninja, and they're bringing Blood uh-huh. Gulch into Fortnite, and like I'm just sitting here going, "Oh yeah, the Fortnite is getting a capture the flag mode in that." Uh, okay, can- uh, all right. There, there's a really good tweet uh, that I saw, uh, I guess about a week ago from Austin Walker that was like, "We need to stop talking about Fortnite as a game, and we need to start talking about it as." plastic like it is no longer like a singular idea it is like a material that you can just apply to whatever you know product that that needs to fill and i guess like that there's you know there's obviously an audience and and a desire for that but uh, that's that's not that's not how i interact with with my friends virtually is you know in 
party royale or in Travis Scott concerts. Yeah. Um, it was also just so weird to me to see Red versus Blue because like is that I don't know. It was such a meeting of the generations, right? Like Ninja talking to the characters from Red versus Blue, where I was like, mm -hmm. I was in my Discord chat while it was live, and I was just like, what is happening? I don't understand. It's like, I don't know. <laughs> Um, it doesn't make any it doesn't make any sense to me and I don't understand it. So um, we got a release window for Scarlet Nexus, which I realized finally reminds me a lot of um, Code Vein. Remember that? Was that this year? Was that last year? OK, I, I heard the name, but I, I, I don't think I really kept up with what Code Vein is. It was that um, like Bandai Namco souls alike where everybody was a vampire and it was like a vampire world it had the really crazy character creation system. Uh, oh yes. I think, I, I think I did see Code Vein. My, my understanding or my takeaway from code, the Scarlet Nexus stuff was that this would be more like a, uh, an action RPG, like a tales of kind of game almost. Hmm. Okay. Um, but I, I don't know. I don't have a good barometer for those. I don't play really, I, I guess either souls like games or tales like games. So that maybe, maybe this is, I don't know if this is cool. I don't even know if this is cool. I watched this <laughs> thing. I was like, I do. I like that. I don't know. Maybe this is just, it. I can't tell if this is like good or if this is like anime bullshit with like a different wrapping paper on it no i get it like when they start making these 3d character models that are based off of an anime art style and they put them into some kind of futuristic looking armor and then they're fighting a bunch of esoteric monsters and your brain just kind of starts to go what i mean um, i don't know I i'm gonna steal all of the red strings jeff <laughs> yeah. and then i will be the red string man <laughs> Like, what the fuck? What? What? Okay, fine. Ah, the red string man. Uh, I tell you what, the red string man makes more sense than bringing just cause to cell phones. You think so? I I don't understand this one at all. Like, I I I get the feeling that like just cause is uh, just has no idea what to do with that franchise because I. The last two games, I feel like, were bad. Three and four were both kind of bad. And then it shows up as a phone game that apparently has some Battle Royale type of stuff going on. Uh, it, like, I... When when this trailer first started, I was like, oh, this actually... I actually thought that this was a fascinating concept, right? Like, reduce Just Cause down to, you know, a... A, a kind of pulled back isometric almost twin stick shooter looking thing that could be cool and that could be a really interesting mobile experience right i mean if just cause is about going around and blowing shit up um yeah i would like to do that at while i'm you know on the toilet i would like to do that while i'm on the go just <laughs> just blow up a couple of little oil tankers but then like halfway through you're, you're, you're right like once it, like there was there's like f 10 seconds in that trailer of what looked like a hud for maybe a three v three v three mode or or something and it looked like the most insane incomprehensible thing i couldn't understand it like it, blowing shit up with in multiplayer makes sense doing multiplayer modes. I guess you have to do that if you're doing a multiplayer game, but I don't, I, I, this probably won't be good just because of how many things that this looks like it's trying to be, but it, I think there's potential in approaching, uh, approaching the style of, of multiplayer mobile game with just the balls out, like, Hey, just here's a big stupid action game. Just go for it. Blow every everyone. The, there's a point in the trailer where there's like four helicopters all on top of each other because just everyone is just blowing stuff up in the same screen. Sure, man, why not? I don't know. There's a big fucking mech. <laughs> Rico doesn't fight in mechs. What the fuck? That was an like, expansion to Far Cry Three where they added in mechs. Uh, <laughs> no, I okay. I think I know what it is. Watching this trailer again that that confuses me about this is it's the it's the camera angle um, because the camera angle is like kind of 
very pulled back. It's pulled back and it's pointed down. And when I think of Far Cry, a lot of times I think of... Just Cause. Or Just Cause. Yeah, not Far Cry. Um, I think of of like getting high up in the air using the parachute grapple mechanics to get a sense of verticality you know uh bringing in helicopters a lot of vertical stuff in that game Mm -hmm. that it seems like this viewpoint kind of diminishes that but i don't know i also don't play phone games so i'm the wrong person to ask maybe it's a fun phone (laughs) game in in the realm of phone games it's just the last thing i ever expected to see was just cause, and then the second last thing I expected to see was that it was a phone game. <laughs> oh, and and look at that! If you go back the final the final couple of seconds of the trailer, that they do like make a point of showing the grappling hook, and the M in the logo is a grappling hook. Yeah. So they they know that like the the other part of just cause, other than explosions, is stupid shit with the grappling hook. So maybe that's represented somewhere that's not in this video perhaps perhaps um let's see i was though super psyched it was weird to say this about uh ruined king a league of legends story which i'm not a league of legends person but i really like airship syndicate uh, which is where when um uh, what was it joe madera's company that made dark siders and all that stuff at thq when they uh, uh, vigil, when vigil left THQ after they were dissolved, they split into two companies, and one is Airship Syndicate, and the other is uh, Gunfire Games that made the um, uh, Dark Siders Three and Remnant from the Ashes and that Kronos from the Ashes that just got ported over to regular stuff, and then the other side was Airship Syndicate, and they made Battle Chasers, Dark Siders Genesis, uh, and I think like one other thing. And they, to me, I like, I think they got the, like all of the Gunfire Games games are very gritty and dark and realistic. And all of the Airship Syndicate games are very like smooth and polished. And they, they kind of have that very great art style from Darksider stuff that I I feel like they might have gotten more of the artists than gunfire got. <laughs> um, but this was very reminiscent of kind of a combination between the battle chasers game with the turn-based action and something like dark siders, uh, Genesis with the kind of top down isometric stuff. And, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm all in for it. Uh, it's weird because I don't give a shit about league of legends or the fact that these are all league of legends characters, but I do like airship syndicates. So, <laughs> um, <laughs> Yeah, I I also know nothing about League of Legends. Uh, I don't really have any fondness for Riot, so this just kind of, you know, uh, went, you know, I I, I just kind of spaced out during this. Uh, it it this it, this this looks like a phone game. I will say, like, this looks like the the free phone game with the uh, the the uh you know the the side the the 2d kind of turn-based battle system and then you go to a uh you know a colorful kind of dark but lots of glowy green stuff uh overworld maps and i don't know uh this maybe this is for somebody i could see it i could see it a lot of times i think the difference between airship and what you're describing is that they tend to be a little bit they have a very good design sense that mm. makes up uh, for some of the other stuff. Uh, actually, I was going to say last, but let's. there was one thing that's not in either one of these lists that I'm a little disappointed about, and that is, um, I'm going to look it up because I can't remember the name of it. It was in the Game Awards because I remember watching it. Uh, Flying Wild Hog uh, has a put out a trailer. So Flying Wild Hog, being the developers for Shadow Warrior, put out a trailer for a game called Evil West, which was this like super kind of gritty uh, cowboy steampunk demons like and it's a CGI trailer, but I'm so much of a fanboy for Flying Wild Hog that I'm willing to give this an opportunity. You've got this guy that looks like he's straight out of Van Helsing game. He's got like a Wolverine claw and brass knuckles that come together and i'm i'm 
I love it. I'm I'm loving it. That's this one's all up on my list. Um, I don't know. Do you remember seeing almost, this when it was going? I I did. I almost thought this was like, oh, this will be like because I I also don't know a lot about Desperados, but I know it's also kind of a wild westy thing. So I thought, oh, then maybe this is like a big you know new spinoff or expansion for Desperados, and they're doing like a weird uh. You know, uh, oh, ooh, demons are in the West, but uh, th- yeah, this this is our, this seems fine. It also uh, is going to be the first thing that Flying Wild Hog has done that hasn't been Shadow Warrior. Shadow Warrior. <laughs> well, they did hard reset. They did Shadow Warrior. Then they did hard reset redo. Then they did Shadow Warrior two. Then they made that Devolver Land Expo thing that came out at E three E three this year, and then Shadow Warrior three, and then this is going to be happening. Um, I guess they're both coming out in 2021. So, um, hmm. but yeah, I'm more excited yeah. for this than I am for Mass Effect. Um, Mass Effect got a teaser trailer for whatever the next Mass Effect is. Um, I was really, I was really proud of myself for calling it super early because I saw the blown up uh, Mass Effect relay gate, and I was like, oh, I know what that is. Um, you could probably see some of the stuff from. I mean, Bryce, like, this, okay. Uh huh. <laughs> Go on. Go on, Jeff. Let it out. Okay. We all remember that Mass Effect 3 was not the best. I mean, like, even if you like that game, like, it, it didn't really fulfill the promise of Mass Effect 2. There was all that grindy multiplayer bullshit. I mean, like, eventually they had the DLC, they patched the ending a little bit. It became fine acceptable but like the level of hype from mass effect 2 to mass effect 3 and then we got to the end and the fucking kid came out and was like pick a color and you did and you were like and that's it that's that's what i got and everybody was mad and then they forgot and then mass effect andromeda came out and it was a rushed buggy mess that like i couldn't get my attention and all the npcs were doing the heads turning all around and all that bullshit right like that happened and then like they half patched it and everybody forgot about it and then they put out anthem and everybody but me hates anthem i think (laughs) anthem is fine for six hours if you get it for twenty dollars and you just play the single player i like flying around an iron man suit but i'm not gonna which seems like if if i was making anthem not that uh, not even the intended outcome from a player who did buy the game absolutely absolutely and they're still trying to fix anthem hopefully so like y'all know that bioware is like you know the last four or five things they put out. I think that Dragon Age Inquisition was the last time they put out a game that people liked. And I think that that was still kind of like a half and half thing where some people really like it, but some people were just like, oh, that's it's just a fetch quest. RPG mechanics are dull. There's like better RPGs. There's better stories. Like I get the companions are good, but you know, like they had to put out the thing telling you to leave the starting area of Inquisition because people kept spending hours and hours and hours in the starting area being like, I don't understand. So I don't understand how you get... I don't understand why you wouldn't be guardedly optimistic at the very least and not like, oh my God, I can't believe it. Mass Effect is coming back. And it's like, but Mass Effect hasn't been good like for a while now. And Bioware as a studio hasn't been very good for a while I guess uh, I, sweater was my, pretty good. My guess for both Mass Effect, this Mass Effect will continue trailer and the um, unnumbered Dragon Age trailer that we talked about earlier in the show. My guess is that for both of those, um, that it's meant to be a signal to, you know, uh, to a longtime fans of Bioware that, hey, uh, uh, we are not becoming a live services company. We recognize Anthem is, it was maybe out of our real house and we are not going to let uh, mass effect Andromeda kill this series that everybody seems to love. Um, I, I think, I think there's a reason there's not a date attached to these. I don't think that these games come out for a very long time. Um, and, but I, I, I that 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 would be my guess is that this is meant to be like hey just uh, we get it 
we're we're gonna we're trying again. This is not over. Do not uh, uh, begin writing your your uh, <laughs> your 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 speeches over over the loss of Mass Effect and Dragon Age. Um, but I can also see where it's maybe not a still not a sitting easy if you are a fan of either of those series right now. The way it comes down for me is that I have a very um, I have a very like uh, binary no I have a very like uh, a, a, a nerdy no a very like accountant like attitude to fandom like has your studio produced games that I like and if the answer is yes then it's like then I look forward to seeing what you do next flying wild hog you know whereas if you've mm-hmm. produced several failures then I don't care what it is that you're making I, I you're going to have to to re uh, you're gonna have to re-earn my trust because once you've put out several bad or disappointing or even mediocre projects then you're no longer on the side of the ledger that says like be instantly excited when something is coming from this studio and that's where i am with bioware where it's just like i feel like they've been doing nothing but failing for what like half a decade and that you know all they have to do is put that fucking n7 logo up and everybody's like yeah and it's like well why yeah the they they're not very good anymore like they haven't managed to put out a very good game in a while but I don't know. Yeah, but this is that's that's how redemption arcs work, right? This it like I recognize you've got a very pragmatic and I think a, 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 a very noble approach to your expectations. I'm all for it. I love I love tempering my expectations, Jeff. It's my favorite thing is to not get excited about things that I like. <laughs> but that's not how Excitement. everybody is yeah that's right you know if you if you're someone who especially you think of how um how deeply impactful dragon age or mass effect must have been in the past yeah. for 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 folks and how like there's something deeper there right there's there's there even if you're on the ledger for some people the previous games of the the previous installments of those games are so great that there are still you still are allowed the off chance of optimism about it so i that that's why i think that these are a signal of like hey we're gonna we're really we're really gonna we're really gonna try it because my sense besides you know the sense that andromeda probably wasn't very good probably also was was rushed you know oh, oh, uh, may yeah. have been uh, you know, uh, an attempt to kind of re to, to cash in. Um, and m- maybe the sign is we're gonna, we're gonna really try to treat these with craft and, and precision and care, whether that's the reality, you know, two or three or five years from now, we'll, 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 we'll see. But, um, I think that this is not for you. Jeff. No. <laughs> no, 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 and and I get that. I get that. I mean, I, it's good to to have you here to counterpoint me on that because I <laughs> again, it's like I have a very my experience with fandom in general has over the years I have been disabused. Where like it's like every franchise that I used to love let me down at some point, mm-hmm. even even. Even Dark Souls, even Metal Gear, even like my favorites out there, like Metal Gear Solid Five, I'm just not as hot with that as I used to be, right? Like it, it was fine as a game. I didn't think it was very good as a Metal Gear game. And like Dark Souls Three, I thought was kind of a letdown when it came to the Souls franchise. But beyond that, Star Wars, Star Trek, Doctor Who, like the Marvel movies, Harry Potter, the Lord of the Rings, like 007, like every franchise at some point has let me down. And I've just found myself in a position where I'm like, it's better for me to be pleasantly surprised than it is to get all wound up. But then through my heart pumps, apparently 
uh, soulless Klingon or soulless Vulcan blood because <laughs> I, I basically you don't want to be hurt. This is not that's not what it, Jeff. You don't want to be hurt again. I closed and myself I reckon, off to love a yeah, video game. You're cloistered. <laughs> We've got cloistered Jeff. Punished Jeff is not ready to be hurt again. But you and know what? That's that's a very that's a that's a very valid response to you know disappointment and and to keep to steal yourself from becoming uh for lack of a better word a rather rabid um consumer of these franchises of these of these series yeah i mean and on the other hand but the, you know less people think that i'm uh what uh, what the children refer to as a hater um <laughs> i i i love immortals phoenix rising and i've been talking shit about that game for two years i when it first showed the trailer first came out and i was like oh it's like assassin's creed odyssey for babies fuck that game and then like they changed the name from gods and monsters and i was like it looks stupid and they showed it and i was like it looks really generic and then i played it and i was like oh this is the Ubisoft that I've been wanting to play for a long time, and the only thing that's disappointing to me about it is that somebody at Ubisoft didn't give them enough money to really make the cutscenes look nice, so there's just a lot of canned animation in the cutscenes, which is a shame because the voice acting's incredible, the art design is amazing, all of the combat animation in the world and the, like, you know, there's a bunch of gods and they've all gotten turned into, they've all gotten turned into something uh, antithetical to their nature by this, the bad guy. So like Ares is a chicken. They turned him into a chicken and took away his essence. So he's not as fierce as he used to be. You have to like convince him to help you rehabilitate him back into the God of war that he actually is. And, it's great. Like it's funny. There's a there's a bit at the beginning of that game where they have you jump into these like these dungeons. You remember uh, like that are on the map. And the first time you jump into one, the game fades to black and it brings up an end credit sequence where all the credits are Zeus and they're just like, well, that was a really short game. And then it's like, ah, just kidding. I'm like, great. This is great. This is charming. And this goes a lot to me for making me excited for the next Ubisoft thing because I see that there are still people that are not just churning out tom clancy's ubisoft game there's somehow these people got the ability to make a non-gritty comedy Mm -hmm. breath of the wild game that's not tied to assassin's creed in any way that has a lot of cool mechanics and is a genuine delight to play so like that's the other half of my coin anyway i think everybody should play that game it's amazing (laughs) uh all right we've got a lot of cyberpunk news (laughs) um so we're going to start with the best one. Uh, apparently, <laughs> the genitals are popping through the clothes in Cyberpunk 2077. Um, yeah, apparently. I mean, this is a game where you don't even see your character all that often. <laughs> so, <laughs> I, 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 it's, yeah. Uh, well, it's funny because uh, one of the things I just got done recording over the last couple of days, the videos for this game and like when you go to the character creation system the character is just wearing shorts they're just wearing like underwear including the lady option and when you go down the slider past the face when you start getting into body options it just zooms out and they got the full boobs out and i'm like hey man i'm putting this on youtube can i just get like a sensor turn sensor on and they're like nope so yeah, nope. it defaults to nudity on. Yeah, uh, there's a there was this was this in in our list of articles, but like you know the, you could watch clips of people, big streamers playing through the the, the character creation. Apparently, Twitch's uh, company line is as long as the streamer does not uh, uh, you know linger too long, really making a big <laughs> deal out of it, you'll be fine. Which is like what they're like. How many there? Mm, that's really fucked up. Actually, it's really there are a lot of really cool smaller games that explore either nudity or eroticism or some stuff on 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 in those fields that are on the fucking banned list. No play, no go at all. And oh, but Cyberpunk is you know this huge trillion dollar game, so it's fine if you know 
Pokimane shows boobs for <laughs> 10 seconds. Well, like, I, fuck off. The, the funniest thing about this is that like, the, okay, so apparently the the dick, you know, the, the dicks, they, they just like clip right through the pants. But the thing is that every time you go into the inventory screen, it shows a picture of your avatar. Like you don't see your avatar when you're playing the game, but you see it every single time you go to change your weapons or your equipment mm-hmm. or open your cyber stuff. So if you've got a thing where your dude's dong is hanging out of the front of their pants, you're going to every time you go to switch to a better shotgun, you're going to see that. And I. It seems t- I don't know. Like I, it's so hard to do QA for games this big. But this seems like the sort of thing that, like, this. How could you not catch the big dong mode? Like I don't, <laughs> I don't know. I, I think, I think you take a look at how long it's taken them to make Cyberpunk, and you know, I mean, remember this game was supposed to come out in February. This yeah. is this we are we are you know this, this game is now ten months delayed and. And is it cynical of me to say, oh, well, Cyberpunk had had to come out right before the Game Awards, had to come out right before Christmas, had we can't we can't miss can't miss the holidays because we can't push it another year when it probably would have been best in that way. You look, you know, if in terms of like bad press and bad impressions of buggy games uh, uh, coming out Ga- all these glitches oh i yeah i loaded into cyberpunk and i've got all these tiny trees spawning everywhere people t-posing cars running into shit and then they're yelling at me because they're running into barriers like even if the even if all of the stuff i just mentioned is fixed now you never you never fi- fix a first impression in in my book mm-hmm. and 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 now you have you have this game come out and they don't even have versions for the new consoles yet. They just hey time well, it's not time for that. Well, you, you these are I think in in it's just ooh no I someone it, really really said they have to have this out before Christmas and everyone tried to, to very hard to do that and and look what you have. This is the result of that. This is the result of not giving a project enough time. Yeah, I 100% agree with you. I think this game should have been delayed by another year. Um, but I think that they uh, was it. I was thinking I was talking to somebody uh, earlier um, where like once you show gameplay, it's like the clock is ticking. And the longer you go on, like the more weirdly frustrated, especially like it, there becomes this weird thing in the game industry where like I personally am of the impression that you should delay as long as you need to finish it as long as as long as you're actually working on it and it's not vaporware but like if you know if covid threw a monkey in the wrench and you guys needed to push this into 2021 or whatever whatever the point was like it should have launched on all platforms at the same time this is not even i mean the second story that we have here is that the ps4 and xbox one versions like the base ps4 and base xbox one versions are apparently just like garbage they're just like straight up kind of trash at this point like um i don't know i haven't well, actually tried mm-hmm, it mm-hmm. or I, go ahead what were you going to say well, well, and this is this goes back to what I say about first impressions, right? Like, it's unfortunate I have to say the sequence of words, but you know, this article, this tweet that we're looking at is like two days old. Yeah. Uh, like, I, I know they put out a patch today. Who knows what the fucking game looks like? As someone who doesn't play it, ha- hasn't played it, doesn't have it, wouldn't play it on a ba- his base PS4. Like, I, I don't even know what the reality of that situation is. Um, and and so this polygon article is not going to get unpublished even if all this stuff is fixed but you're it, it this just feeds into that you they should have t- had more time to iron all of this stuff out or you know uh, uh you know avoided feature creep maybe maybe targeting the ps4 and the xbox uh uh one it was was a bad decision i it's i don't i i don't know and and um, unfortunately, the ambiguity of that is now a part of the launch of 2077. Mm-hmm. Full stop. It's written in the book now. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's interesting what you were just saying when you talk about this Polygon article where we're looking at like a, you know, a dozen, like a half a dozen tweets of like previous gen gameplay that looks really bad. And it's like, it occurs to me that in the previous part, when I was talking about Mass Effect Andromeda, like they did some work on Mass Effect Andromeda, but I never went back. 
like I, I played it and then I saw mm-hmm. the gifts online and I never saw anything like that in my game. So who knows? Like maybe it is fixed, but you are right when you say that, you know, you, you never get a second chance to make a first impression. What's that? The shampoo yeah, commercial yeah. or something? <laughs> 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 but uh, yeah, I, I, I think they got trapped by pushing it because I feel like what it was supposed to come out it was supposed to come out on April 16th I remember because that was my birthday and I was like yay cyberpunk for my birthday and then they pushed it back from there to November and then they pushed the week you know or what was like a month right from November to December and I I uh, the the thing is that I also have a lot of sympathy for CD Projekt Red because doing QA on a game like this I can only imagine that it is next to impossible. If you do, you know, a fix to reflections and it breaks a radiant quest that happens when you're 200 hours in, like people always talk about, remember on the PS3 how Skyrim had that bug where like the longer you played Skyrim, the bigger the save files would get and then the slower it would get to load until it finally just crashed and you couldn't play the game anymore. But Oh, wow, no. But like how were you supposed to test a f- 50 hours of Skyrim. Like, how is a QA person that's being paid eight hours a day to sit in a cubicle and test out individual things supposed to test what happens at hour 50 in Skyrim? How are you supposed to even, like, let's say that you decided that you were feature complete with Cyberpunk, which obviously they were still fixing shit all the way up to day one because they delayed it and they made them go back into overtime. How the fuck are you supposed to know whether something crops up, you know, 20 hours into the game how do you test for that and it's like uh, the only way that i know it's kind of like some of the skyrim stuff again that comes up or some of the mmo stuff where players start doing stuff that you just never could consider now a lot of this stuff like the you know the cars spawning in the people spawning in a lot of that stuff does not fall under this category right but i I mean i agree i agree with what i i agree with what you're saying in that this type of game is a huge hurdle. It is an inherent part of making a big open world, huge quest based game. Um, And and I I think it's very telling that this, that final delay that they had, you know, pushing the game, what, uh, however many weeks, right? Pushing the game uh, weeks when they were, how close to to their their release date at that time i mean i thought it would have been impossible to delay cyberpunk that last time when they did because of how much promotional shit has been tied up into this i think i mean i mean this is a this is a very weird and stupid thing but how many posters and 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 paper stand-ups and all of this stuff with that November date had been printed, right? How many, uh, all of the different partners and the platform holders who were expecting, you know, this big tent pole game. Um, you can't just like this, this, this was, I think the last time I was on one of the, one, one of the previous times I was on the show when we were talking about the crunch was like, okay, well, look, when you have a deadline, you got to hit the deadline. And sometimes that means at the end, you got to push it, whatever. But also, you can't you can't push a deadline like that so close to it and only that short right yeah. they, I, they it signals to me that they knew really this thing was was coming in way too hot and it must have been even it must have been even worse if they did it so close and for a, such a short delay uh it it's but then you get into I don't know the business of CD Projekt Red. I don't know who's who is responsible for for that management, presumably. Um, but at the end of the day, you still have to QA test this game. They the scope of this game is the scope of this game. The scope of these types of games is what was what it is, and that is on your plate. And you need a big plate for it. And and if you can't get it done, that. It, it, it's not the genre's fault and it's 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 not even the QA's fault it's 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 ultimately a management fault right it's mm-hmm. it's someone didn't give them enough time to do the things that they needed to do that are inherent with you know the game design plan it's 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 unfortunate that this is just going to be 
a black mark on this game and for how long who who knows right people people are super excited about this game i'm sure people will be playing it for a while but man uh really a big game like this and getting caught flat-footed is not uh, well it's it's funny because the opposite side of what we're talking about is that i saw multiple articles i don't think i have one in the in the kind of setup here but multiple articles about how like day one this game made back its dev budget like it has already made back Mm. the entire development budget of the entire game in day one sales so it's like it's all it's all gravy and also people have to remember that cdpr owns gog so they've got like this kind of steam thing where they're getting continuous income just from the royalties that they charge for platforming things on essentially a storefront. So it's an interesting thing where like, you know, no matter how many people on Twitter drag you because the PS4 version sucks, they, they made, well, they've at least started in towards Uh making a decent profit. Now, uh, again, like but how I, much of that is is pre-orders, right? I mean, this is a such a hotly, you know, anticipated game, and especially with that last delay coming so close to the deadline, mm-hmm. like were the pre-orders numbers between you know the the actual release date versus the previous release date were they very much different? Is that a reason why they didn't delay it that much more because they knew they were just they just needed to open the door and all of those funds would come in and maybe fund the next cycle of developing and and finishing this game like i mean they should they might as well have just called it fucking beta it should just be cyberpunk 2077 beta and then and then this would be a non-issue yeah this uh, uh, that's maybe that's oversimplifying but early access then then we would have context for like this huge game coming out and having all of these different bits of turbulence then at least it's a beta they're gonna work on it it's like gmail they're gonna keep working on it yep no i i I get it i get it and i and i want any of this to come out like i think um from my experience so far it seems like the bones of the game are solid and like i said in the first part i i do think that cdpr is not gonna take the money and run i think they're going to probably in fact i i'll put down some money right now uh just, just between you and me, but it's, it doesn't matter. Uh, I, I'd be willing to bet you that within the <laughs> next two or three months, there's going to be a story about how the multiplayer mode of Cyberpunk has been pushed into 2022. That Whatever that separate multiplayer mode, because there's going to be a multiplayer. It's not a mode. It's like going to be a separate thing where it's a multiplayer game that takes place inside of Night City. This is okay. You're you're what? making faces like you've never heard of what <laughs> I'm talking about. Um, but, and, and, and granted, I I haven't been following it super super close, but what? Yeah. <laughs> so in the, I, I get the feeling oh. that's going to end up getting pushed out. They already put out that first patch today, as of us recording, to take care mm-hmm. of this issue that they had with um, uh, the brain dance, the first brain dance mission really flashes you in the face with a lot of flashing lights um and apparently the, somebody that had a an epileptic that had a seizure uh there is a seizure warning in the eula but it's not exactly front and center who reads that no one reads that that's I, such a, yeah bryce did there used to be a thing where games would would most games would come up and just be like this product contains flashing lights if you have a history of epilepsy uh, you know, be aware of that. I feel like most games used to come up with that, but then I thought back and I was like, I don't feel like I've seen it in a while. Like it was a PS3 or t- two era thing. Maybe it was more of a thing with CRT TVs, and when they moved into HD, it wasn't as much of a problem. But that that might have been it. I d- I definitely I have a distinct memory as um as a kid uh, in grade school, like uh reading a manual for like a PlayStation One game and. Uh, remembering it had like a seizure warning there. Yeah. Um, but um, but but also but also like you know the brain dance device that they use is like modeled off of a real device that is meant to in it you know induce seizures medically induce seizures. How do you, you're gonna miss that? You're missing that one, dog. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, but apparently that's been patched to make the flashing less intense 
there's also been some questions in this uh, in this epileptic article about um, the the effect on Johnny Silverhand when he kind of zooms, he kind of vooms into the scene and okay. is a little flashy. Um, there was also an issue that got patched out today that was with uh, if you turn on streamer mode, there was still DMCA copyright music playing in the brain dance <laughs> uh, uh, tutorial scene, um, which is not since been fixed. Yeah. Um, there's a lot going on. There's a lot going on in this game. This game's busted up. You, you make, I, I, I really like the point that you made that th- it feels like an early access game. In fact, it feels a lot like when we would say, like, I feel like pre um, no man's sky, when that actually kind of started to become a thing, like a lot more mm-hmm. front and center of, we put out a broken game and we're going to fix it later. I feel like that's always been a thing, but that like uh, No Man's Sky was really like the it was so explicit what happened there um, mm-hmm. that previously and, we- and so well received like right like you, you that well, is the conversation about No Man's Sky is like now I mean yeah eventually and also like hey now this is the reputation of like man it used to be this but now they've it's blossomed and it's become this huge big thing. Uh, I, I, yeah. Yeah. So, but I, yeah, cause a lot of this stuff, uh, like here's, here's the one we had this whole story about that. You can't change your appearance. Like, I think I mentioned that in the beginning, right? There's yeah. nothing to change your appearance. And, and, and I don't know. Did I mention it before that? Like, didn't the Witcher three, when it launched, you couldn't change Geralt's hair. And then like a couple months in, they put in a barber in the big shop and then you could go and you could change Geralt to like four different hairstyles. I, and change uh, the beard, is that another uh, yeah thing? i don't i don't know enough about witcher 3 at launch to to say but it when it, it that sounds like uh that would be cd project red's track record yeah i mean i remember in the witcher 2 how they put in a whole tutorial area that wasn't in the game originally because the game started and you could end up like kind of doing the tutorial their their quote unquote tutorial out of order it actually is what turned me off to the witcher 2 because you're having an interview with this guy (laughs) and he's got a bunch of dialogue options like mass effect and each dialogue option is a is a a a part of the tutorial the first one is like moving around the second one's like action but like down the list there's one where he's like tell me about the dragon and i was like oh i want to know about the dragon which is like the next to the last thing in the tutorial that you're not supposed to do until you've learned how to walk around so you go in there and immediately get flattened by a dragon and there's all this combat happening and cdpr eventually Mm. came back and fix that i don't know i cdpr so far has not led me to believe that they're going to take the money and run and leave the game the way it is now. Um, sure. It is a shame that this is the, the initial uh, um, uh, impression that people are getting. Um, yeah. Also, it's worth noting that apparently the PS... Uh, so when it comes to the backwards compatible versions, the PS4 version on the PS5 defaults to 60 frames per second, but the Xbox version on the Series X, which is what I'm playing does have a, a, the ability to change between basically high frame rate or quality. Um, and quality gets you down to a very rock solid 30 frames per second. That's the way I've been playing the game. Um, I, it's got a pretty good amount of lighting. It obviously doesn't have ray tracing, but this is obviously some late generation lighting tricks with lens flares and lights on people's faces and stuff like that. Um hmm. So the question I had all the way leading up to the launch of the thing was PS4 on PS5 or Xbox One on Series X. If I have them both, which one should I go with? Right now, it appears that the Series X is is has a little bit of a leg up. Who knows? By the time this podcast comes out, maybe they've already put a switch in the PS5 <laughs> version. So um, let's see. We, ha- we talked about the music. Um, okay. I th- <laughs> We're a little bit over time, but I want to run through some <laughs> of these last things. Um, okay. Because I didn't know this was happening, and boy, this is one of the bugbears that I just, I can't stand this shit so much. So for anybody that doesn't know, right now the government is in the middle of one of these um, uh, 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 d- 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 
what do they call it? Like financing, like uh, funding the government thing. Passing the budget, yeah. Right, passing the budget. And so they're doing the whole thing where they're coming down to the last hour. Today, uh, we're recording this on the 11th. It was actually the day when the deadline happened. They passed an extension to the 18th because they're trying to get uh, COVID relief sorted out before they pass the budget so that people can have that. None of that matters. What matters is a piece of... Well, all that matters. All that matters. Not for the sake of this podcast. (laughs) What matters to me is the piece of shit Tom Tillis, um, this fucking... God, I hate this. Who at the last second has shoved in a few different pieces of kind of online copyright legislation into the budget the way that happens. And one of them is to make streaming copyrighted material a felony offense um currently it is a misdemeanor currently and it's not even very prosecuted all that much but basically you know like if you accidentally stream music online that is copyrighted that would be a felony Mm -hmm. what in the world could pos i between all the Twitch stuff and some of the other stuff that I've been seeing recently, like I hate the idea that it's like, oh, did you play five seconds of single ladies? Well, like your entire video gets taken down in Germany because like we own the rights to single ladies and you can't have fucking five seconds of single ladies in Germany because of the law. And I'm just like, what are you talking about? This is such an overreaction that I feel like has been going on for a long time. And then to escalate that to a felony, whether it ever gets prosecuted or not is outside of the point. Like it is insane. The idea that if you upload like, okay, (laughs) Like I guess if you upload like an entire movie to YouTube, but even then it's like what it's a fucking movie. That's a felony. Like you could send you to prison for for fucking what uploading the Matrix to YouTube and being like, ah, the Matrix, <laughs> check it out. It's gonna be offline. Like, but then when it, you look at YouTube's track record of pulling copyrighted uh, uh, copyright strikes on the amount of audio, not even Twitch with this ridiculous rainwater sounds humming a copyrighted song but just on youtube the amount of things of somebody who uploads a lot of videos that have gotten hit by copyright stuff and then the idea that that is going to be a felony is redonkulous to me i and and also the fact that it's been shoved in to a fucking budget, budget reconciliation bill or whatever you know the Funding the government bill at the eleventh hour. I hate that shit too. So I'm sorry. I this stuff really makes me mad. So you, all of that is the cor- correct reaction. I'm gonna I'm gonna say the wrong thing as a means of of making everybody feel better. But understand, <laughs> I'm neither a lawyer, a, a political analyst, nor do I know anything the fuck that I'm talking about. But uh, this happens a lot where someone. You, you you see it like uh this this senator wants to wants to eliminate lunches from schools entirely no more lunches and it's like uh, a lot of times that stuff is grandstanding is posturing they do it cuz they know they're never going to they're never going to get uh, get those things passed there are um uh there are a lot of reasons bad bills get in the news And a lot of reasons why you never hear about those bad bills getting passed. Um, That is not to say that this uh, is or is not one of those situations. But I would say, uh, you know, this Kotaku article makes a very good point. A little, little too, a little too low in the article for for my taste. That uh, uh, that this politician like has received money from hey the MPAA, Sony, Universal. Uh, 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 Warner, you know, those, that money, uh, sometimes you have to act on that money in some cases. And so even if maybe because, uh, this politician knows that there's no way anybody would want this as a part of, uh, of the government budget, you know, getting passed, um, but he can say, ah, you know what? I really tried and I tried to do it right when it was really, you know, advantageous to do it. Um, so that's, that's my response to this is like, yes, yeah, the fucking DMCA is becoming a felony would be 
catastrophic. When you like, if you think that the duct tape patchwork systems for handling DMCA are bad now, wait till you wait till there's felony money on the line. But I also think that it's also more likely that this is not even grandstanding, but just just a, a, a pack money um, play. So I would I would say just. <laughs> like it's great that we have the EFF and Internet Archive and all these other, you know, pro, uh, 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 uh pro open information groups keeping us aware of this. And also, everyone, you're, probably, you're probably gonna be fine. Everyone, you're probably fine. It's probably naughty. There's a, I'm. This is Bryce's hot lock of the week. This is probably gonna be nothing. <laughs> no, I. I <laughs> You are you are one hundred percent correct. Uh, the thing that I think that the thing that always makes me both very um, very nervous and very angry anytime stories like this or the Twitch story or some of the stuff that happens on YouTube comes up is that I feel like there is no one I don't know of like prominent. It's not like uh, there are prominent uh, senators that are then pushing back to say, no, we must allow the children to upload Fortnite clips with Beyonce in them regardless. Like there's no I, – I feel like it's always – there's a big corporation and then in this case, you know, a senator like – and that the re, and that the response is – not you, Bryce. You're very good, but some <laughs> jackass on a podcast at at like hour two minute twenty, like my freedom to upload Beyonce is being and like I just I wish there was. Mm -hmm. I mean, you mentioned the EFF, and there are kind of some some packs and groups out there that are doing this. It's just that like ever since we started doing this copyright shit on YouTube and with Twitch, I feel like. Like I, you know, I was alive in the '90s when they were arresting the grandmas because the kid had put Napster on there because they were downloading a Blink 182 album, and it was like, this is ridiculous. Or I have kept up with over the years the way that they've kept pushing the copyright system out because specifically Mickey Mouse is getting ready to go into the public domain, and so now it's the death of the creator plus 500 years, I suppose, because, mm -hmm. you know, even though that's wrong, and I, I just, I guess I don't see as many, like, powerful, organized, concerted efforts by large groups to push in the opposite direction as yeah. grandstanding, I got bought by Warner Media, fucking Tom Tillis. So yeah, and uh, and uh, you know there is, there's no money in right in promoting a copy left policy of opening up information, figuring out a new way of of retooling the DMCA and retooling, uh, uh, you know, laying down, let's, let's exercise really. What is that? What does fair use actually look like? And, uh, uh, updating, updating these things for the modern era. There's no money in that. There's a lot of money in the record labels, keeping the status quo exactly the way it is, where it is irritating and is, just uh, just enough where people are just enough where people are eh, they, they they will they will uh, 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 uh they will take it as it is um that it's it's uh, that that's kind of what what it is right now especially in a time where we're dealing with a pandemic and people are getting kicked out of their fucking houses and all that shit like yes. like there's with a there bigger fish no to fry in, yes <laughs> right yes. which is is why i think that this is this is a nothing burger because who is going to, this is, this is just to capitulate to, to, to donors. And so, um, it, hopefully, you know, I, I mean, that's the dream though, right? Is that copyright law, uh, you know, advances to, to, to the century, to this, to, to even the decade, um, because it is outdated and it, and it, it um, it, it hasn't grown with the way that we've used the internet and used digital media, um, but there's no money. There's no money in in the music labels giving up those things, you know, giving up giving up control. And uh, really, the best thing that we can do right now is unfortunately the status quo, because who's going to be that mouthpiece for saying, you know, uh, oh, let's take money out of Beyonce and Taylor Swift's mouth, you know, out, out of their wallets. Like, 
who's going to cape in that? Cause that's, that's going to be the argument is, Oh, you want to, Oh, you really, you want to, uh, endanger, you know, creators, big creators and small creators. You know, I think, uh, personally, I think that there is a place for a reasonable copyright system, a reasonable, a, a way as a creative, as someone who creates stuff to, to have a legacy and to profit off of your work for a, a reasonable amount of time. But I also recognize that with the dig, the digital information revolution, that information spreads far and wide, very fast. And, and with the way that we interact with it, it's very quick that, the things that you put out into the world are uh, 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 g- grow byproducts that other people, um, you know, build off of remix and, and, and transform. And um, I think that there should be a balance, should be a, a better balance, especially better than, than it is today. Um, uh, but also today's not the, today's not a good day for me. Today's not a good day for me to make that fight. Oh, I get you. All right, let's let's go through these real fast to finish up. Um, Monster Hunter, I, I don't even understand what the hell this was, but there was a line in the Monster Hunter movie that's coming out where the guy was like, I don't even know, is this offensive? I didn't really even understand. It was hard to so, understand what, oh. what what this was. Um, I mean, I, I get it. It's just it was very weird. It wasn't like there was a slur it was like a really stupid joke where the punchline was chinese and it was a really 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 idiotic joke um mm-hmm. i mean it's it, it it it's yeah so the monster hunter movie opened up in china and there's a pun in the middle of it where they say whose knees are these chinese whatever um which uh 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 people of Asian descent uh, very closely tied to the uh, kind of schoolyard uh, racism line of um, oh, uh, yeah. uh, 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 and now I've completely the dirty, it, the uh, dirty uh, knees. Look at these. Dirt, yeah, dirty the, knees. Look y- at these. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, but uh, also somehow that, I mean, this air, this film or this screened in China where they have very strict censoring. And I guess the subtitles uh, are maybe where ju- I don't know something about well, it. it. They, it's, they got it through the censors, but ooh. yeah, it said that like in, in China, that like the Chinese subtitles for it talked about like something about a man on his knees, like it, it apparently. And so then there was this kind of whole idea of like, were they trying to 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 sneak this past the censors in order to criticize China? And so the movie got shut down. That part got taken out. Um, it got Monster Hunter World got review bombed on Steam. Wow. Capcom uh, the, like distanced themselves from the whole thing. Uh, it's very. It was a very strange, very strange thing. Um, yeah, it was just it, really it, bizarre. Yeah. <laughs> it was very, it's, very bizarre. It's fucking weird. Why would you? Why would you do? Th- like, the, you know, major motion pictures have to go through a lot of hands, and no one said, "Hey, we <laughs> should just." I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. But I. It's not. I don't. I don't understand. I don't really know. Um, in any case, that has been excised from the film, and the film is going to be coming out strangely early, twelve days ahead of time. Um, which also, is, that that article is very weird because it definitely says seven. It says it goes from December twenty fifth to December eighteen, which is seven days and not twelve. Like, it, I don't hey, know. video game movies—they're fucking shitty anyway. What's going? Who cares? Just yeah. Hey. I'm I'm gonna watch it if it's on streaming service. I'm gonna watch yeah. it. Stupid Paul W S Anderson with Mila Jovovich movie. Sure, I don't have a dog in the Monster Hunter fight. Um, Will it? I thought they planned that for a theater release, and of course there are no theaters really open in America. I don't uh, know. I don't know. I'll have to find out. And then last but not least, people asked me about this, and so uh, what a great way to finish up. Oscar Isaac mm. is apparently going to be Solid Snake in a Metal Gear movie. People were like, "Are you excited?" And I was like, "No." Did- what? No, what? no, what? Uh, nothing. What? Uh, no, it has nothing to do with Oscar Isaac. It's that I don't think Metal Gear should be a movie. I think it's going to completely miss the point of Metal Gear. If you make Metal Gear Solid into a movie, like 
uh, there's a whole thing in that game about how you snap the neck and shoot all the genome soldiers and then later on in the game it turns out that like their enhancements and their genomes were based on like your dna and so technically like you've been like killing your brothers snake they're your brothers and like there's all this anti-war stuff in there and there's all of this weird stuff about genes and fate and who we are and peace and war and what does that all mean it's just going to be a really cool looking action movie where Oscar Isaacs puts on a great bandana and a wetsuit and shoots a bunch of guys and then punches a, a metal gear like it as like as convoluted and stupid as the Hideo Kojima philosophy bullshit is that people don't like and I get that and I'm not here to tell you it's secretly good or anything I played that game when I was like yes. 20 and I loved it and I love all of the bullshit I love it I love it oh yeah it's um, good I don't think that the Metal Gear game is going to even remotely touch on the themes of any of the games. Metal Gear Solid 2 is making this idea about living in a simulation and like what is reality and like what makes a person a person. Like was Raiden the new snake because he'd been through the VR training and because they simulated the 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 Shadow Moses incident, does that make a new super soldier and like you know the the what does the information passing through GW mean about the state of the digital future in our world? And like, was Solidus really the good guy because he was trying to crash the system the Patriots were creating? I sound like a crazy person. I understand that, but no, it, this is what happens it makes in the game. 100% sense to me. <laughs> it makes a hundred and ten percent sense to me. I, you know, I had not considered uh, something that you said, which um, is that. Uh, well, it's also that there's a the, if you take like let's just take Metal Gear Solid the game yeah like there's a lot happens in that game mm-hmm. that you know if just in terms of like the entire cast in terms of of all of the interactions all the different locations like the it, it would be difficult to fit all to fit a good version of that that doesn't feel super rushed or feels like it's lost um, some of its messaging in even if he, this was a long, like two, two and a half hour movie, you would lose a lot of that. And I think, uh, you know, playing playing that game makes a lot of the anti-war and the anti-nuclear stuff feel very visceral. It feels um, very, very powerful when you are taking down a nuclear weapon when you're, and you've gone through the, the warehouse where they store the nuclear runoff and all the pollution and you, you're talking to Natasha and she's she's saying you know yeah hey nuclear waste is never going to go away all of the nuclear waste that we've made we have no way to handle it and it will destroy the planet if we do anything other than keep it in these barrels that are very sensitive yeah. um, like there's I I agree that there's a very deep story there that you probably can't put into 90 minutes N- maybe there's a simple story may, right maybe there's a simpler i mean version it, of this that you can tell in 90 minutes and i mean you know you got to kill your darlings anyway when you make an adaptation but um, i think i think what you end up with is is snake merrill liquid and then like sniper wolf and otacon all the other bosses are gone you take out psychomantis because you don't have time like if you're going to focus on the relationship and explaining to an audience what is happening with of course like see but th- that's the problem with this is that i don't know that any of this makes sense because you're going to have to explain to the audience you that, have to have the, uh-huh, uh-huh. that they are the the twin genetic sons of big boss well who is big boss well like you're gonna have to explain who big boss is because then you have to explain that like one of them is the superior clone and one of them is the inferior clone and like what is liquid trying to do if he's not trying to create outer heaven by stealing metal gear rex and like forcing the united states government to give a home to soldiers in exile and what does that even mean Mm. if you simplify it like that's where i'm getting into is that so much of the reason people like metal gear mm -hmm. is because like you could make a movie about how snake and meryl fall in love and liquid is the bad guy and he's got the nuclear thing and maybe Gray Fox jumps out at the end, but like any time that you want to go into, like, how do you have Meryl without the sniper wolf scene? And then how does that resolve itself? 
or so I don't know. I feel like you end up having to prune so much to get into a state because if you just made it a generic action movie, then it wouldn't be Metal Gear, right? If it's just like ah, this madman stole a prototype mech. And like you have to stop him, the super soldier known as Solid Snake. My my niece went in uh, with the first Foxhound unit, and you have to rescue her. And it's like, okay, well, but none of that is the reason that it's good. The reason it's good is because of all the weird connections to other stuff. I don't know. I, I mean, we. I mean, we can. I mean, if you want to spend another hour here, we can. <laughs> fi- I, 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 I feel confident. I would put twenty dollars down that I can. I could figure out a a three act structure for metal gear solid the script that would doctor be good, that would be a good movie yeah. right like yes you would have to lose a lot of the stuff you'd have to lose a a, a bunch of stuff but i think if you if you have uh, a condensed core snake merrill otacon revolver ocelot sniper and lick and liquid like there there is a movie there there's a there you can find a movie unit in there um but what about and the DARPA chief, losing... Bryce? The DARPA I know, chief. It, it, <laughs> and I would hate to lose the DARPA chief, but you know what? Maybe maybe the whole maybe that whole thing is I mean, also fucking weird. I mean Do you do you yes. do you do you put do you bring Fox Die into the equation and then do you have to explain that Naomi was raised by Gray Fox and then you have to explain who Gray Fox is and then you have to have the the ninja part of it in addition to all the rest of the stuff that you just said, or do you cut out no, all I of mean, that you ha- and then you would... Yeah, you would you would lose those. Yeah, you would punch. lose punch. Gray Fox. You would lose Ninja. You know, you would lose Raven. You would lose probably Psycho Mantis, or he would be like in the background, so people could be like, "Oh, Psycho Mantis is in the movie." But then, but then um, if you but then if you lose the Fox Dice Serum, then don't you lose the reveal at the end that it turns out that that Solid Snake was the inferior clone the whole time, even though Liquid thought that he was the inferior clone. I. You know what? I, again, I, it, it's yes. Uh, 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 <laughs> That's me, another. Po- this is becoming let, another podcast. But let me let, yes, me, let me back yes, up to let, right, me, yes. let me back up to what I was saying is that like I I okay. feel the the problem that I I keep coming back to is that the 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 goofy weirdo stuff that we are talking about to me is what elevates this from just being an action thing, and I have no doubt that you could write a three act structure a, a Metal Gear movie i bet you could i I have no doubt that you could condense it into that the question is does it then become just a cool action movie as opposed to something more Mm -hmm. um you know something about the role of people in the world and the whole genes and memes and scenes and all that nonsense like i mean i'm not that you have to have all that to be metal gear but like i guess the thing is that if Metal Gear is just an action game where you come out and go like, how cool is Solid Snake? He shot all the guys. That was a good movie. He John Wicked those motherfuckers and threw that guy off a giant robot. Hells yeah. Then like, I don't know. I just feel like you've lost something precious that was like the core of that wasn't necessarily about how cool is Solid Snake. It was more about these like weird relationships and this weird story, but I don't know. And, well, yeah. And like, uh, the last point is like you're you're absolutely right, <laughs> and also somebody owns the rights to a Metal Gear Solid movie, yes. and it will make no money if they make nothing. So they're gonna make something and hope it becomes something, and that's how that's why there are remakes and and prequels and sequels and all this stuff because someone owns those IPs and people need movies netflix and disney plus and hulu and they all need movies so please make us movies it doesn't matter it doesn't have to be good there you go and now we've come all the way back to square one we've 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 (laughs) we've come full circle on the world's largest podcast uh before we wrap up bryce uh why don't you tell the people where they can find you when you're not over here talking about video games with me yeah, you can find me on Twitter at Brycas, B-R-Y-C-A-S, and I do a bunch of streaming over on twitch.tv slash Night Attack. Uh, I do uh, some of I do the producing for the podcasts over there, as well as, um, you know, uh, on the weekends, usually Fridays, I will do uh, a weekly stream. I've been doing Hitman. We just started Marrakesh on uh, on Friday Night Bryce, where I'm trying a hundred percent Hitman. So, uh, and Marrakesh is cool. It's it's mm. great. It's so much. It's so much smaller than Sapiens. I love it. It's <laughs> Sapiens is so <laughs> fucking big and long. Um, so, uh, uh, Twitter.com/slash Bryce and Twitch.tv/slash Night Attack. Thank you. 
Cool. And with that, we're going to wrap it up. Mail at RageSlide.com is the email address. I know that we didn't get to the email questions, but we do need email questions. So please send in email questions. I'm hoping that once we hit January, it'll stop. But who knows? Maybe not. Maybe it's just going to go on like this forever. Maybe, maybe this is my life. Maybe this podcast is infinity, and it just never stops. 